Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? I got a new setup. I've got a new setup. Changing my desk around. Let's have a look. Let's go to chat cam. Um, yeah, so this is how this is how it's gonna look. Well, this isn't how it's gonna look. There's a mess behind me. What's up, Ender? There's a mess behind me. That's the old situation. I still gotta clean that up. And there's gonna be a table here. There's gonna be another table here. Um, but this is how this is gonna look. Can you guys hear? Yeah, okay, you guys can hear me. Um, this is my new table set up. I have replaced the desk. I'm tired of the desk. I want a big table with lots of, with lots of space. Um, easier to clean, more space. It's just better. Table, table is just superior. I'm gonna have another table right here next to me. Going this way. And yeah, that's gonna be my new PC setup. I don't know what to do with what's going on behind me. I don't like drawers. Um, I kind of want to build shelves. I kind of want to get a shelf situation going. But yeah, that's what I've got. Um, but other than that, today we're going to be playing Broken Roads. Switch to my game cam. Also, I changed the stream setup a bit. And it looks like I still need to make... Okay, no. All right, yeah. That looks... Eh. I need to adjust the chat real quick. It's going to bug me if I don't. It's going to bug me if I don't fix it. So I'm going to fix it. Stand by. I don't like how low the text is. So I'm going to bring it up. Um, I do have an idea. I do have something that I want to do differently. As far as the reviews. And that's that I... Oh, does it reset? Really? Broken Roads is an odd way of spelling Xenoblade. This is in... That is somewhat true. The thing is, I don't think they were trying to spell... Xenoblade. I think they were trying to spell Broken Roads. I got other games to play, Ender. I got other games to play. I'm not about to binge. As I know you want me to. I'm not about to binge Xenoblade. I, I, I just want to say I appreciate everybody sending me like game suggestions. I do appreciate that. Ender suggesting the Xenoblade series. PP told me that I need to play um, near near replicant. I'm gonna play near automata after. But um, yeah, I appreciate yeah, I appreciate getting to know all of you through your favorite games. So something that I want to do different. I'm gonna switch to chat cam. Something I want to do different for this for this review. By the way, I'm still working on the Dragon's Dogma review. I'm still working on that one. Um. The video, I mean, and it's tricky because I have to, I have to post, like, I got to move forward. I want to, I want to review this game now, but at the same time, the more footage I record, like my hard drive is filling up with recorded game footage and I need to use it and it's, and I can't delete all of my old Dragon's Dogma footage until I post the review, because I have no idea how much of it I'm going to need. And some of you are probably thinking, I should probably download, you know, I could just download the YouTube streams, but then the quality drops. And I'm an artist, all right? You understand? Um, so, yeah, I got to work on, I start my new job tomorrow. I just got like, I am, I got a million things going on. I start my new job tomorrow. But here's my idea for game, for my new reviews. 
What's up, Ian? Broken road, sweet Jesus. How much more of my tax money will this take? New job hype. All right, so here's the idea. Here's what I'm going to do. For the new for the new review, I'm going to record this section right here, right now. So the plan is that when in the future, whenever I re record or whenever I review a new game, the idea is I'm going to record my expectations going into the game. So right now I haven't even opened the game. I've downloaded it on Steam. I've got it sitting in front of me, ready to hit play, but I haven't played it yet. And the idea is I'm going to record my expectations going into it, what I'm looking for, what I'm looking for in the game. And I think that would provide some value for the review. I think that would be a good way to start the review off. If you're watching the review right now instead of the live stream, you understand. If you're watching the live stream, hey, I'm going to use this for the review video. Or at least try to. All right, so my expectations for Broken Roads. Um, let's see. It's an indie game. It's an indie game, and it was only 30 bucks, $30. So my expectations are pretty low. My expectations were pretty low. I'm not going to judge this as hard as I would a AAA game because it is an indie game. I have a soft spot for indie, de indie developers. Uh, and it's not full price, it's $30. Usually having low expectations going into a game works out for that game's benefit because I'm always surprised. Like, I don't think I've ever gone into a game with low expectations and then come out like, yep, that met my that met my incredibly low through-the-floor expectations. So I don't know if that changes my expectations to high, but I have low expectations. I I, I just don't... It's not that I expect bad from this game, like Halo 4 and 5. <laughs> I mean, Halo 4 and 5 did meet my expectations, which were pretty low going into that game. Halo 4 and 5 absolutely met my low expectations. <laughs> absolutely met my low expectations. Uh, so going into this game, it's an indie game, and it's 30 bucks. I expect it. I here's what I want. I want this game to be like. I, I want to get the same feeling I get from this game that I got from Disco Elysium. I'm really hoping I can like harness that feeling. That was a great game. Um, I don't expect the same amount of quality. I don't expect the game to be completely voice acted. It would be huge if it was. If this game is, if this whole game is voice acted, that would be. Um, be a pretty big deal what else uh what else am i looking for yeah so um the the developers themselves said they want this to be like fallout the first two the first two fallouts what's up mr shelley and leech the dev said they want this to be like fallout um disco elysium Going into this game, it's going to be like an RPG. And whenever I play games like this, oh, Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 3, all the Baldur's Gate games, actually. So going into this, um, whenever I play an RPG like this, I tend to drift towards the diplomacy route. Like I'll try to, I'll try to like, role play every event, avoid every combat, just try to do like the diplomacy route. I my main character in my first playthrough of Baldur's Gate was a bard with expertise in persuasion and deception to give you an idea. I usually try to go the diplomacy route and that is going to be the case for this game. Pacifist exactly. I'm going to go the pacifist route. But this game does have a combat system. Disco Elysium didn't have combat, just didn't have it. It had like intense moments where you're getting shot at, but it was still just skill checks. I don't know how feasible it is to avoid combat in this game, but we're gonna we're gonna find out. But just know that going in that I'm gonna try to do like the pacifist route or as much as possible. I'm going to try to avoid combat. And also I'm gonna oh, there's one more thing. This game has a morality system. 
This game has a morality system, and it's not good bad. It's not Jedi Sith. It is a complex morality system. I am going to judge that incredibly harshly because a lot of games have promised complex morality systems and have failed. So hopefully we got something interesting from this one. So yes, the morality system, I'm going to judge harshly. The game overall, not so much. Um, like I said, indie, $30. I'm going to go kind of a pacifist route. If I got to do combat, I'll do combat. It's fine. I don't, you know, I don't mind killing stuff. I got kill some, gotta kill some stuff. Kill some stuff. Uh, there better be puppies. This game is going to score huge points with me if it has, if it has, if it's voice acted. The entire game is voice acted. It's going to be huge. I will, I will, I will be blown away by that. By that, that's going to get. That's going to have some points. The cameras. Oh, yes. Um, the setup is different. <laughs> yeah, I know. The setup is different for right now. It will probably change tomorrow or the day. I don't know if I'm going to stream tomorrow because I got work. And I don't know how, how much that's going to take out of me because it's going to be the first day. And I still need to come home and get set up. Um, I'm still gonna have to come home and get set up. Stop recording that. What else? Oh my gosh. Homer, knock it off. Hey, come here. I'm expecting a package. I'm expecting a package today. More, more, um, infrastructure for my setup. A Basset Hound, 100% expectations. Yes. Homer meets and exceeds, meets and or exceeds all Basset Hound expectations. He's adorable. He is loud. He's precious. He is flabby. Come here, boy. Um, Shelly finished Dragon's Dogma. Leech just started Dragon's Dogma. That's great. Um, Broken Roads is on sale. Yeah, I, I covered that, didn't I? Yeah. 30, yeah, it's $30. I got Broken Roads for $30 on Steam. As far as I know, it's not available on consoles. I'll have to double check that, or I would have I would have rented it if it was on consoles. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Steam, only on Steam. Maybe the Epic Games. Here's the puppy. It's on PlayStation Network? All right, so, it does, okay, so if it's on PlayStation, it doesn't have a physical. Because I wasn't able to rent it, so that means it doesn't have a physical. But that, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not on consoles. This game is going to be clicky, though. I, I, I feel like mouse and keyboard is going to be the way to go playing this one. Is my package here? I got a package coming in today. It's going to be, it's one of the wall mounts for my monitor. I know we haven't started the game. I know we're 10 minutes, 15 minutes in. We haven't started the game yet. Get over it. Um, I've got a wall mount coming in today. I've got a new keyboard coming in today. And tomorrow, new tables coming in, which is I'm gonna which I'm going to attach over here on the side. And yeah, I've just been busy. I've been busy. I got I got start my job tomorrow. I've got a bunch of stuff behind me here that needs to be cleaned up. Like I, I just I reworked my entire studio. Or this this area, my whole PC setup. Re reworked that completely. New setup, who dis? Reworked, yeah. I like. I just got tired of. So whenever, I'm kind of a neat freak. I, I like, or I'm really organized. And I guess I guess a neat freak. I'm a bit of. I'm a bit of a neat freak. Super organ or try to stay super organized. And my stuff gets dusty. And every once in a while, I want to take everything apart, take everything off of the desk, and wipe it all down and clean it. And that is really challenging with the previous setup, with that desk. Because it's not like that desk moves easily. And it's got, you know, drawers and everything. It's just, it's not easy to move. Like, it's a whole thing. 
This table, on the other hand, very easy to move. And once this monitor that you can't see directly under the camera right here, once this monitor is mounted to the wall, this whole setup is going to be incredibly mobile. The computer is pretty much the only thing that's... You guys can kind of see the computer here. The computer is the only thing that's really going to be a challenge. And I think, honestly, just... I had to move the table earlier today, and I just left the, the computer on the table while I moved it. So the setup is more modular now. Easier to move around, so it's going to be easier to clean. Now, that was the goal. Also, more space. More room for activities. More room for activities. Anything else to go over? I think I'm ready to hit play. Let's get started. Wall mounted computer. All of my every all of my monitors are wall mounted, with the exception of this one. Oh, with the exception of my main one. All of them are mounted to a wall. My wall mount comes in today, which I think that's why I think that's why Homer was barking. I'm hoping that's why Homer was barking because my my wall mount came in. So that that's supposed to come. It says it's supposed to come in today along with a, a new keyboard. So once that's in, this monitor right here, the, all of my monitors will be mounted. Oh, I also, I mean, while I was going crazy changing everything around, whoops. I also changed my stream layout, you guys probably noticed. So this new layout, it's kind of, it doesn't have, it's a lower, it's going to be a lower resolution for you. Can I just break everything? I need to change this. So this new set, ooh, 240? Let's go. I'm going to do, for some reason, I'm only getting 60 frames. I'm going to do 60. Oh, I was hoping to get bored of this window. Can you guys see? Yeah, okay. I don't like it. I don't like it. I mean, I guess as long as it's. I guess as long as it's is recording. Show unavailable moral choices. Ooh. Do we want to see what we're missing? Let's leave it default before I start messing with stuff. This this is kind of calling show unavailable moral choices. We'll leave that off. I'm curious about that though. All right, let me get right, games recording. All right, we all good? Can you guys hear? Yeah. They thought ending the world would end the war. That much was passed down. Everything else has been lost. When the bombs dropped, 80% of Australia's population was wiped out just like that. Those who weren't immediately vaporised carried the radiation inland, poisoning all the pretty places they crawled to. The desert swallowed the rest. Dang ghouls. Despite it all, we survived. We rebuilt. We even formed strong enough allegiances to have wars of our own. But these wars were of disease, of hunger, of people who'd forgotten the sacrifices that have always been made beyond the steady glows of the cities that now choked with dust. Our great-grandparents made it. We will too. All it takes to thrive in this new world is guts, grit and hard yakka. That's where you come in. That's where I come in. I feel like I need to s revert. I thought that this was okay. Cause I'm going to be kind of, I'm kind of going to be looking like that. 
There's really no good way to face this camera. Tomorrow it's going to be a lot better. Or whenever I get my table, it's going to be a lot better. All right, Origins. Uh, you grew up with a gun in your hand. If you wanted to eat, you shot what your parents told you to shoot. Starvation is a powerful motivator. It's that simple. They hired you out when you were in your teens, telling clients that a hungry kid shoots better. After a few years, you worked up the courage to run away and you crossed the outback to make a new life for yourself. You've earned a bit of a reputation. That's why you weren't surprised when you were offered the possibility of a long-term gig with the scouts at Bali Bali. It's a mad world out there. And instead of trying to make sense of it, you've carved your place in it. You'll be damned if anyone thinks you'll just quit. Hired gun. No, thank you. Surveyor. I'm thinking barter crew. Perception awareness. Awareness strength. Starting skills. Shooting mastery. Opportunist. Really don't know what this means, but. See, I'm leaning toward barter crew. We got charisma. I don't know what resolve is. Leadership. That looks like that looks like a strong start. Jackaroo. All right, let's read surveyor. Wide open places call to you. They always have. You spent nights under the stars as a child. Your parents teaching you about constellations, plants, and animals. I am kind of like a surveyor. The first time you learned how to use a compass, you were hooked. You took off from your home young to explore the trackless waste. It was only a happy accident that you discovered you could make some serious coin by telling people that what you found. You love the thrill of discovering places that fell off the map or finding the towns that have sprung up since the fall. It's almost as good as getting paid when you tell someone, some new client, what you found. The world is a treasure waiting to be found. You're just a map, the map maker to reveal a secret. I'm really leaning towards Surveyor. I like this one. It's going to be between Barter Crew and Surveyor. What is this Jacker? What were you Jacker? By the way, I got Baldur's Gate 3. Any build recommendations? Baldur's Gate 3 is just is just D and D 5e. So anything you can build in 5e, kind of, to you know, to some extent. There's subclasses and feats that are missing. But once we get mod tools, uh, I'm gonna grab my lens cleaner. Be right back. Usually I have them right here at my desk, but I don't. Well, for the most part, you're just going to build it the same way you would in D&D. &D. Reddit, according to Reddit, Monk and Paladin are like the strongest classes. Or the, they have the highest damage output, I think. My build recommendation, Bard. Go Bard. And expertise, persuasion, and deception. Anyone here? Anyone else hearing double game? Oh man, hopefully it's not coming through the mic. Uh, do you double game? Though? Hmm. Oh, I, I think I know why. I think it's because I have two monitors set up. Maybe I can, is there a way to mute this? Oh, seeing a double game. Wait, are you hearing or seeing? So I have that set up so that you can, that's, that's intentional. I thought that said hearing. Yeah, that's intentional. That's so that you can see the. So that was what I was going to talk about. I have changed the stream layout so that you can see the entire game. Because normally my my beautiful mug and the chat was over the gameplay. But now I've moved the game over to the side. Is that, I mean, is that really better? 
Is the black bars better? I, I'm, like, I guess we'll do the black bars, whatever. I'm still in experimental phase. I'm trying Dirge Paladin when Gail offered me a hand, I took it. All right, barter crew. You spent your earliest years riding the back of a barter crew's wagon, traveling all across Western Australia from Boddington to Bonnie Rock. You've seen thousands of deals go down. You learned to haggle with the best of them when you were knee high to a coca. By the time you were a teen, you decided that maybe it was time to make your own way. You've got a head for numbers, an eye for trade, a tongue keen for speech. Man, I'm really leaning toward this one. Nothing makes you happier than driving a hard bargain. It's been a hell of a ride. You get your way. You'll hunt down every opportunity. Put your Gamefly sponsorship logo down there. This is, I mean, that's where I would put my Gamefly sponsorship, sponsorship logo if I had one. If I had one, maybe one day. All right, last one is called Jackaroo. These are, these are like my four origin. I, I don't know what's up with this blur in the text. I thought that was my monitor for a second. You guys see this? It's, it looks weird. It's like smudge on the text. Uh, you were a lost pup. Your parents ditched you at a remote station when you were an infant. The manager brought you in. The station hands took to you and you became a kind of mascot. You grew up with tools and can fix most simple machines. You learned how to read. You learned how to read an animal, care for its injuries, and put it to work. They taught you to hunt, giving you the skills to survive about anywhere. Okay, so like, okay. Appearance issue. You were hunting in the bush when the raiders came. First sign you had was pillar of smoke. By the time you got back, everyone you knew was dead. You've been on the go since, looking for a new place to settle down. You thought of my, you thought you might have found it in Brookton. Maybe you can see your days out there. All right. This is a tough one. I like Jackaroo. But. Music reminds me of RimWorld. It's. Um, it's music. It's not really. A... Keep in mind, this is an indie game. So it's going to be. If we encounter like some stock music and sound effects and if it, you know. Thirty dollar game. Right. Let's not be. Let's not be too harsh on it. Like I said, I have a soft spot for the indies and the indie developers. I want them to succeed, and um, I definitely have high. Well, I said I had low expectations. Like I have high hopes. I have high, low expectations, but high hopes. If that makes sense. It wasn't an insult. It was very soothing. Well. I was, <clears throat> I was kind of, <laughs> I was kind of insulting it. it. It's like, it's just really simple. It's kind of, it's not blowing me away yet. All right, what are we doing? So like surveyors, like, um, like a cartographer, I'm, I'm having a hard time distinguishing between surveyor and jackaroo. So the jackaroo is like an orphan. You grew up with tools and can fix most simple machines. So like, I guess like a mechanic, maybe, maybe like survivor, learn how to read an animal, care for its injuries. And then the surveyor, like they're, they're like they're very similar. You spent nights under the stars. These two, are, these two are pretty similar as far as like from the role play aspect. Perception and insight affects range damage, accuracy. Intelligence affects action points, initiative. Yeah, so this is this looks surprisingly combat fo focused. Charm and appeal affects number of punt points. What is punt? I just saw that punt. Take a chance to challenge beyond your usual capabilities. In combat, spend punt to increase accuracy. Out of combat, punt to attempt to pass a skill check.
leadership. Yeah, I'm thinking barter. Endurance and toughness, strength, tinker. You know what makes people tick? Biology. Yeah, like everything's, everything's, everything about barter crew. All right, we're doing barter. So barter's going to give us charisma, leadership, and biology. I want, I want barter. Groundbreaking music, actually. This one? Uh, what's the skill on Surveyor, Vigilance, and Punt? Yeah, Surveyor looks kind of combat focused with the skills. Barter Crew is definitely like my, my um, social skills that I want, but I really like the background. I'm assuming your background is going to come up in dialogue, which is why I was kind of leaning towards like the cartographer, the Surveyor, excuse me. But yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to go with Barter. All right. Here's my appearance options. So many options. <laughs> I kind of like this guy's vibe. Artist seems feeling. supposed to be. There's supposed to be four different origin stories. Yeah, I assumed each one had their own like plot line. <clears throat> Introduction to the moral compass. All right, this is this is the stuff that I'm gonna really come down hard on. The moral compass shows a 360 degree view of possible dialogue options. Attitudes you can hold, decisions you can make throughout your journey. It is divided into four parts. Utilitarian, nihilist, Machiavellian, and humanist. With the golden arc representing your worldview often overlapping different quadrants. Where a decision lies is not always clear cut and the borders matter. It's entirely possible to be a util utilitarian focused on the greater good for all, which will suit options in that quadrant close to the humanist border. Likewise, you can be within the utilitarian quadrant, but tending far more to focus on the interest of your own group with decisions tending towards the Machiavellian border. Broken Roads doesn't reduce things to simple right and wrong or good and evil, and this is reflected in how you can handle scenarios you face on your journey. All right, so for everybody who who does who doesn't know, um, if I remember correctly, all right, let's go with the ones I know. Humanist is going to be like the good guy. Um, love of people. That's the good. That's the good route. We're, we're, uh, it's kind of reductive to call it good <laughs> since the game wants does, wants more than good and evil. Um, so humanist is caring for others. Machiavellian, complete opposite. Selfish. Uh, only care about yourself. Utilitarian, how do I describe that? That is for the betterment. I almost want to say the betterment of like the machine of society. Utilitarian is kind of like, kind of cuts emotions out and goes with the utilitarian goes more for the practical. Oh, practical. Pragmatic. Utilitarian would be like pragmatic, I think. And then nihilist, I'm pretty sure nihilist is like nothing matters. Who cares? Nihilist is like, I don't, I don't who cares? I don't care. Nothing matters. We're all going to die. Nothing, nothing, everything's meaningless. <laughs> that's the nihilist. Uh, so that's the four. And I'm assuming as you play the game, you're going to lean towards two. So there's actually like, Four different moralities, I guess. Be utilitarian human, utilitarian Machiavelli, nihilist humanist. 
I don't know how that what that would look like. And then Machiavellian like nihilist, I'm assuming. We'll see. The golden arc in the center represents your worldview. Each decision you make can affect your position on the compass, rotating the worldview slightly towards the decisions, the decision you have made. At the center of the compass are the brightly illuminated areas of moral tendencies, which allow your character to make low level moral decisions or expressions of ideas that would otherwise fall outside your world, their world, worldview. So this golden arc, it looks like wherever I am on this compass puts me, it overlaps with these little nodes, which I'm assuming are abilities. Where would I put myself on this compass? I think, I don't think anybody would put themselves. Pretty, <laughs> I mean, where do I put myself? I don't know. Um, utilitarian humanist, probably. Definitely not, definitely not Machiavelli. I don't think I'm Machiavelli. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think anybody would admit to that though. Um, or maybe, I'm, maybe I'm misremembering what this means. Pretty sure Machiavellian is like evil. And nihilist, definitely not. Um yeah, I don't, I don't consider myself either of those things. At the center of the compass is brightly illuminated area. Okay, I read that. Note that the further a decision is from the center, the larger impact will have on shifting it. The larger, the farther a decision is from the center of your worldview, the larger impact it will have on shifting it. Do they mean the center of the golden arc or the center of the entire compass? I'm assuming they, I'm assuming they mean the gold. The golden arc is in the center represents your, yeah, the, your worldview is the golden arc. So, like, if I use this for an example, if I choose, like, this blue option, it's going to send my worldview to the right a lot more. I think that's what that means. Um, plus, the more decisions you make close to the center, the more narrow-minded you will become, allowing you... Wait. The more decisions you make close to the center, the more narrow-minded you will become, allowing you to make higher-level decisions, allowing you to make higher-level decisions. Conversely, oh, wow. Uh, selecting a wider range of choices will make broad-minded, allowing more options, but making certain high-level decisions and moral traits unavailable. <clears throat> okay. So right away, this game's promising some, some pretty deep stuff. So this golden arc has a width and it has a height. The more focused, the more narrow-minded you are, the further up the arc goes so that you unlock higher tier options. But your worldview closes in, so you have less options. On the flip side, if you're more open-minded, more broad, the arc widens, but you lose access to those higher tier options. That's, what I'm, that's my understanding, which is incredible. If they execute this, if they do this well, I'm, I mean, I'm here for it. Oh, hey, look, it actually describes what these are. All right, let's see how close I was. <clears throat> all right, humanist, each person's dignity matters most. I choose all meaning and thus what matters, but what is inalienable is that every person has worth. For the humanist, each person's dignity, each person's dignity matters most simply through existing as a being experiencing the world. Yeah, okay pretty close on that one. Utilitarian. Everyone's happiness combined matter. Okay, yeah. So utilitarian is like society. The greatest good for the greatest number. I believe that everyone's happiness combined matters most and thus can justify causing harm or suffering depending on the outcome. Mm -hmm. Machiavellian. My group matters most. The ends justify the means if it favors our pursuit and maintenance of power. As a Machiavellian, my group matters most regardless of the cost of others. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> just evil. It's not, it's not evil. It's kind of... Well, okay, I won't call it evil. I 
Machiavellian is realistic. It's like tribalist. It's easy to say, like, it's easier to, it's easy to call ourselves utilitarian until you start having to care for people you don't agree with. I get, I get Machiavellian after reading this description. Because it's easy to be like, oh yeah, you know, everybody has their rights. Like, of course women should vote, you know, or of course slavery is wrong. Right? That's e That's the easy. Those are easy. It's when you start getting to like the rights of criminals, war criminals, or undesirables in society, murderers, pedos start having to like do that you know what kind of rights do they have i think that's kind of where it, but it does say the it does say happiness of the of the greater number i don't know i might be overthinking this it depends you know what it, it really depends on what my group matters how long is Broken Roads? I have no idea. I haven't even gotten past... Dude, I'm in character creation. I have no idea. I'm playing this blind. I have no clue. I'm 20 minutes in. I'm still in character creation. And then Nihilist is I... Okay, so Nihilist is I matter most. Given there's nothing outside of each individual human experience, nothing ultimately matters, and that doesn't bother me. Thus, for the Nihilist, I matter. Character creation, this is the whole game. I feel like we're gonna have some we're gonna have some deep moral conversations as we play this game. I am going so for my first playthrough, I am going to lean. I am going to go hard on like what I would do if I, I'm not gonna role play a character in this one. I'm gonna choose what I would do in this situation. I think that would be the most interesting. And then in future playthroughs, I can like change it up. All right, question. Ooh, all right, fun. Six morality questions. I guess it's over 20 minutes. <laughs> Presumably it's over 20 minutes. Um, I don't know what the replay value is. Um, keep in mind, I have been talking to chat while I do character creation and kind of going over my thoughts. So, I don't know. But welcome, George. Hope you uh, settle in. Now, everyone remember for legal reasons, these will all be exactly how Steeler responds during this whole playthrough. For legal reasons. My lawyer might actually pop in here at some point. All right, question one. Are we ready? Your crew, ah, you know what would be fun? <sighs> Maybe in the future. It depends on how long the game is. It would be fun if I just did, if I just pulled every single every single question <laughs> that would be a great that would be a fun uh chat plays broken roads that could be fun just poll every single every every one of these all right your crew have been tasked with taking a cartload of fruit to alder side a starving family on the outskirts of the settlement beg you for something to eat as you roll past Truth be told, the client probably won't miss a few apples. All right, I say give the family some apples. You know you'd like to be helped if you were in a similar situation. Give them a few apples as well as a little coin to help them on their way. All right, I'm leaning towards one. Sure, the client might not miss the apples, but if they do, then you'd likely be out of a job. Keep driving. Hmm. Demand that they sacrifice something for it. Clo Ooh, okay. I don't like how that's worded. Demand that they sacrifice something for it. Clothes, valuables, weapons, whatever. You're not a charity outfit. Why can't that just say trade? Like, yeah, give them some apples, but get something in return. They, they, word, it so, they word it so vile. Demand that they sacrifice something for it. That, that, could, that could just as easily say trade for it. <laughs> sound less vile. Uh, all right. Utilitarian. Hand them some of the best apples. A starving family helps no one. In fact, it can bring everyone down. The client kicks up a fuss, except reduced pay. If the job is lost, screw it. Oof.
If the client kicks up a fuss, accept reduced pay. If the job is lost, screw it. I was leaning towards the humanist option, but utilitarian. I'm kind of feeling utilitarian now. I like three. <laughs> I love the Disco Elysium graphic style. I do as well. Man, I'm a huge fan of Disco Elysium. Uh, one and four seem very similar. Um, I kind of want to... Hand them some of the best apples. A starving family helps no one. And if the client kicks up a fuss, accept reduced pay. These mean the same thing to me, except the best apples. Give them a few apples as well as a little coin or best apples and accept reduced pay. I'm, gonna, I'm kind of going to... Kind of want, I think this is what I would do in this situation. If the client kicks up a fuss, then you just take it out of take it out of my take it out of my check. I'm gonna go with that one. After a series of raids on caravans passing near your home, you put together a scouting party. You've caught a bandit leader and one of his raiders. The leader pleads for release, pledging to comply with your terms. Do you free him? Y'all already y'all know me. Y'all been gaming with me long enough. I am I am a forgiving person. Execute them, but wait, both. You've caught a bandit leader and one of his raiders, okay? Execute them both on the spot. Better not to have that kind of headache. Take him back to town to stand trial. This is not not your call to make. Escort them far away, warning that if you catch them here again, they're dead. That's tough. Man, utilitarian and humanist is, uh... All right. Machiavellian, tell him that you'll let one of them go free, him or his raider, and he gets to choose which one lives. <laughs> you mess, basically mess with them. Wait, tell him that you'll let one of them go free, him or his raider, and he gets to choose which one lives. Okay. One of you gets to go free, the other dies. Uh, yes, <laughs> Machiavelli is like the Joker. <laughs> We're going to have tryouts. Make it fast. Best Joker impression. Um, I kind of like escort them far away, warning them that if they catch them here again, they're dead. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. I'd do that. I would do that one. The Saint Unicorn Overlord, get the guillotine. <laughs> Sharpen the guillotine. A nearby townstead has a new chief. And he's starting to flex his muscles. Ugh, these are the worst. He sends an envoy with a threat. Pay tribute or suffer his wrath. He clearly has the military strength to back it up. Do you pay? Oof. I do not like... I do not like ultimatums or getting bullied. If he thinks he can take it, let him come. You're not scared of his threats. Negotiate with the envoy and escort him back. Concealed, your top fighters follow in town, publicly execute. Wait, negotiate with the envoy and escort him back. Concealed, your top fighters follow in town, publicly execute the envoy, displaying his head on a spike, warn the others to surrender their chief or face the same fate. This is about as close to Machiavellian as I've, as I've been. I kind of like that option. Pay tribute or suffer his wrath. That's a threat, right? I think it'd be harder if it didn't say what belief each option was. Ooh, I would like that. If they got rid of like what 
If they got rid of this, I think I would like that. I wonder if that's an option. Difficulty setting. Uh, send scouts to see if he can enforce his demands. If he can, pay up. If he can't, send him a mocking reply and dare him to come take it. Mm. I, all of the, okay. Send an envoy in return and try to negotiate. War hurts everyone and maybe you can work out a way to be a mutual benefit. I like that one. I like the Machiavellian option in this one. But I also like the utilitarian. I think utilitarian would be my call. I'd go with utilitarian. A child in the village has started showing symptoms of the plague. Oh man, and hit me with the, the sick child. Oh no. The town chose to quarantine him and his family, but you caught him sneaking out of the house to play with other kids. What now? <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to read that again. A child in the village has started showing symptoms of the plague. The town chose to quarantine him and his family, but you caught him sneaking out of the house to play with other kids. What now? Ooh, that is a tough one. Now we're getting to the tough questions. Do we let him go with a warning? If he's contagious, you're all affected now too. If he's not, no harm done. Oh, so we don't know if he's... I mean, we can assume he's infectious, right? It's the plague. I don't know. Let him go with a warning. If he's contagious, you're all infected now too. If he's not, no harm done. Rally some neighbors and evict the entire family from town. Make an example of their carelessness. All right. Banish the family. Let him go with a warning. Banish the family. Send him back to his house under careful guard. The whole family will have to leave town if they continue to put everyone at risk. Man, utilitarian just makes sense. Utilitarian just makes too much sense. Return him to his house and explain to the family what will happen to the town if they're all infected. Make them see reason. God damn right it does. Am I a utilitarian? <laughs> As I read these, I think this is the obvious choice. But is this the obvious choice for everyone else? <laughs> Real question, Chad. Is this the is this like everyone's option, or am I? What would you do? <laughs> Hi, Steely Sam. You're awesome, cool, amazing, and a badass. Thank you very much for your groovy streams and videos. Hey, thanks, HCP Gamer. You're saying one? Let him go with a warning. Sounds like the most reasonable and logical. Shelly says one. Let him go with a warning. Three for me. Three just makes sense. Four kind of. Like explain to the family like, hey, listen, y'all are infected. If this gets out, we're screwed. Yeah, I guess we're going utilitarian. There's no execute option, so three. Well, execute option was two. Banish him. Banish him. Banishment would have been an execution. It's the closest you're going to get to an execution. You've been captured by people who've clearly gone mad. Finding yourself in a pen along with a few, along with a dew farmer you've met before. A mercenary stripped of his weapons and a terrified young family. The captors assemble a massive pyre indicating their intent for a twisted sacrifice. Noticing a guard's distraction, you're certain you can escape on your own, but every person you bring with you increases the chance you'll get caught. Chances you'll get caught. Ooh. All right. Utilitarian, take advantage of the distraction to try to get everyone out, saving as many as you can. <laughs> yeah. 
Nihilist, slip away on your own. The others will simply have to fend for themselves. Machiavellian, convince the Merc to come with you. The Dew Farmer can likely find his own way out, but the family will be nothing but a liability. Then Humanist, get the family out first. The other captives should be able to handle themselves. You know, there's not an op there's an option that's not present here that makes the most sense. And that's slip away on your own because that's the most likely to succeed and then come back to rescue them. Wait, I guess you wouldn't have time because they've already set up the pyre. We're assuming you wouldn't have time to come back and rescue. I'm going to get the family out first. The other cactus here. I'm going to go try to get everyone. Save as many as you can. That's my option. Is, is what I'm going with. All right. Last question. You've discovered a cache of pre-apocalypse supplies in an abandoned farmhouse. My mouth's watering already. An iPad. Would be awesome. Some D&D books. What's in the cache? Pre-apocalypse supplies, D&D books and some dice, solar power charger, switch, Nintendo switch, what else, hot pockets, <laughs> some pack ramen, <laughs> uh, tools, Prepper, a prepper base. Twinkies, <laughs> like in um, Zombieland. You can't carry it all back on your own, so you enlist a few friends from town to help. All right, I guess. Ian, grab the books. Shelly, grab the ramen and the Twinkies. I'll get the chart. I'll get the battery pack. Leech, grab the toys. When you return to the cache, you find a group of em emaciated scavengers in the process of looting the place for themselves. Do you let them take the supplies? All right, this one might be a this one might be a Machiavellian. This one might be a kill. No way. Threaten the scavengers, and if they don't hand over the supplies, kill them. All right. I gotta look up this word. I don't see this word enough. Sorry. Emaciated. Emaciated. Abnormally thin or weak, especially because of illness or lack of food. <sighs> All right. So they're starving, they're weak, they're scavengers, they're looting the place for themselves. Not my D&D books. No way. Threaten the scavengers, and if they don't hand over the supplies, kill them. Let them take the supplies, but secretly follow them back to their home. Once there, you can loot the other cuts and kill them. <laughs> Machiavellian is straight up psychotic. <laughs> All right, nobody say anything. Let it let them cook. <laughs> when we get let's follow them so that we get their stuff. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I think a Machiavellian playthrough may be the most entertaining. I just like you know what's gonna be sad? As I play through the game, I'm gonna lose the Machiavellian option. And I'm sure they're gonna there's gonna be some solid gold ones. As we play through the game, my art, my gold, my my golden arch is going to um, is going to move away from Machiavellian, which is a shame because I want to see the Machiavellian. Oh wait, there's an option to show hidden. There's an option to show hidden. Four. I haven't got the four. Slow down. Slow down, bud. I haven't even got the three yet. Okay, three. Let him go. 
They're starving, clearly need supplies more than you do, plus they had no way of knowing you found them first. Hell no. Hell no. Tell them you found the place first, then offer to split the takings. Better to get less than you wanted than to spill blood and get nothing. Or, or get nothing. Hold on. Tell them you found the place first and offer to split the takings. Better to get less than you wanted than to spill blood or get nothing at all. Sam, you're making this game sound fun. I don't have any money left. I, I don't have any control over that, but I don't have any control over that. What's the Machiavellian option, Leech? Okay, real talk. <sighs> Tell them you found the place first and offer to split the takings. Better to get less than you wanted than spill blood or get nothing. Ah, man. Yeah, I do have some sympathy for this, for the weak scavengers. We don't have the option to, like, incorporate them into the group. I thought utilitarian would be, like, take them home with it, take them back to base and, like, bring them in. Listen, I know this sounds Machiavellian, all right? <laughs> but if we split the supplies with them, it's just delaying the inevitable, right? They're going to die. <laughs> like they're going to eat those supplies and then what? Scavenge for the next one? My humanist views. <laughs> um, I don't want to kill them. I, I don't like any of these options. I, four is like the closest. Maki seems kind of risky because they might have better defenses at home. No, it says they're like starving and weak. Can't expect much. That was fun. That was fun. All right, good game. Roll credits. I am a mix of four and one. I was leaning towards one until I saw, until I looked up what uh, emaciated meant. I didn't realize that meant that they were like sickly and weak. Started tugging on my heartstrings, you know? All right, we did it. Oh man. We have literally been in character creator for 45 minutes. Get good. All right, attributes and skill trees. Calculated for, wait, all right. Calculated from two attributes. Fortitude is cal wait. Oof. Calculated from two attributes. Fortitude. I'm assuming this means fortitude is calculated from strength and agility, temperance, resistance, and AWR. Um, AWR awareness. Okay, it's awareness. Res okay, not resistance. Resolve. Resolve and awareness equals temperance. Here we go. Here it is. And then wisdom is intelligence, charisma. Am I making assumptions here? Strength, agility, intelligence, charisma. Each origin story comes with unique bonuses. For hired gun... Okay, I saw the bonuses. In the example on the right... All right, maybe I should read this. In the example to the right, with 8 in resolve and 13 in awareness, all skills in the temperance tree start off at 21. Shooting mastery has a bonus of 10 from the background. In combat, movement points are derived from agility and strength, while action points are determined from agility and intelligence. Once again, agility is just overpowered. You get movement and action. Keep that in mind when distributing attribute points. The punt skill. By the way, all of my points are going to go into charisma. Maybe intelligence. Intelligence, awareness, charisma, maybe. 
It's like your plus two stealth from plus two decks. You're right. One of the unique skills in Broken Roads is the ability to have a punt. What is a punt? I hear punt, I think of kicking the football. Essentially, taking a risk on something uncertain. Am I dumb? What is a punt to you guys? <laughs> I think I think kick the football. <laughs> That's a punt. <laughs> I'm not even a sports guy. <laughs> I'm not even a sports person. Might be an Australian thing. Um, essentially taking a risk on something uncertain. Same, but for them, I think it's a rugby ball. Taking a risk. Your player character has a pool of punt points. PP. Bro. <laughs> Bro, there's not a single game that just can't. Every game has to have, has to have a PP, has to have the PP. It has to. <laughs> Every game. I, I swear they do it on purpose. <laughs> I swear they do it on purpose. Listen, when we all when we all get together and we make a game, it's got it's got to have people like no matter what, it's got to be the most like make it's got to make zero sense, but it has to be there has to be like some kind of PP points somewhere that they can draw on if they need to attempt a skill check. that they fall just short of, or if they want to increase the accuracy of a particular attack in combat. I, well, I guess we call this inspiration. Kind of like inspiration, maybe? Everyone loves to pee pee in a game. I'm not a child. It's, it just, it, it comes up so much. I'm not a child. I know y'all are all thinking like, my goodness. What are you, 12? But PP up in Unicorn Overlord, they knew what they were doing. <laughs> and in Pokemon. Punt is derived from charisma, plus any additional points added to the punt skill. PP is not here. You're right. PP is, PP is, uh, is absent today. Derived from charisma in any points you put in the skill. Each additional skill point doesn't directly equal one additional punt, however. Skills attain different effects whenever a threshold is reached. Soft cap, diminishing returns, whatever we want to call that. In this example, the character has rank two punt skill. Increasing their punt from 32 to 50 would place them at rank three and so on. I love that the game tells you where the soft caps are. That's great. Thank you for that. All right. Steely is level one. I don't know what oh, damage. Initiative. AP. Movement. Health. Range weapon damage is determined by awareness. Melee is determined by strength. All right. We have attributes to spend. We have 10 points to spend. <laughs> Done. <laughs> we did it. 16 Chris. <laughs> oh, I can actually... Hmm. I can actually lower other... I can min-max. Hmm. Hmm. Power and energy affects melee damage, health points, movement, and intimidation. Action, movement, initiative, armor, crit, and dodge.
dump strength if you're going pacifist, just straight up, just nothing. Action points, movement, initiative, armor, crit, and dodge. Agility is supreme in every game. I mean, I guess strength gives you health, movement, and damage, so it's kind of the same. Action, movement, I don't know, agility seems so strong. Resolve is endurance and toughness, affects health, DR, and resistance to status conditions. Awareness affects range, damage, accuracy, crit, dodge, and helps avoid ambushes. Affects action points, initiative, intimidation, and resistance to certain status conditions. I would just like put everything in charisma. Just bring everything to one. And then buff charisma. How high could I get it? 30? Oh, it, oh, it caps at 20. Hmm. Should I cap it? I'm tempted to cap it. Thing is, I don't know how bad having a four is. A multi-class warlock for hexblade. Agility sounds less useful. Strength has intimidate at least. Agility sounds less useful. Action. Like action points is like your turns. So extra turns, your move, your move speed, your initiative, armor, crit, and dodge. Armor and dodge. So ar armor and dodge are two defensive abilities. Crit is damage. But if you're not fighting, you don't need more turns of move speed. I, just because I, I'm not planning on fighting doesn't mean that I'm not going to get forced into a fight. If I'm not fighting, then some, some of these are... Then pretty much all of these are useless except charisma. If I can avoid combat altogether, then yeah, this, these none of these make any sense. Uh... So fortitude affects melee mastery. The point in biology increases the effective effectiveness. They spelled effectiveness wrong of healing items. Allows use of items that cure negative conditions. 10% chance that the restorative item won't be used up. Good. Leadership. Set an example for those around you. Each level in leadership adds a 1% chance that all companions gain two initiative at the start of combat. Character selects an enemy to afflict with the marked condition. Gain a permanent one initiative. Tinker? Use swanky devices. And understand Cole. Cole must be like an important character that talks funny. Oh. Throwing opportunist. Is there an option for large fonts? It's hard to see. The little print pop. Oh, the little print pop up. Yeah, it's kind of hard to for me to read those as well. I'll read them out loud. 
Uh, each level in leadership adds 1% chance that all companions gain one initiative at the start of combat. Character selects an enemy to afflict with the marked condition, giving allies 20% damage and accuracy while attacking this enemy. Base success rate 50%. Gain plus one initiative. Oh, all right, so if I'm going to do combat, how am I going to do it? You can go drunk. Bless you. Thank you. You can go drunken monk. All right, let's bring everything to Bring everything to one and then auto assign. Auto assign says sixes and sevens are, are good and then nine charisma. Oh, I've got 30 points to spend in skills. I didn't notice that. Uh, I want a lot of charisma. I really do. I'm going to bring everything to five. I can get a 17 charisma and have everything at a five. Or I could have a 12 charisma and have everything at a six. Six seems okay. 12 charisma, six is across the board. I'm going to do five. I really want to pass those charisma checks. I'm going to go with 16. 17. Fives across the board with a 17 charisma. Charming guy. Now I've got 30 points to spend. Where do I put them? Use swanky devices and understand what Cole is on about. I really like Tinker. I like leadership. Biology is okay. If I bring punt to 25, I can get that next point. I don't really care about the punt. I don't, I don't care about it. punt. Uh, let's see what a leadership gives. When this character ends their turn, all allies within three meters gain the inspired condition, granting them three initiative for their next turn. I like, I like leadership. I like being able to mark the targets. I like leadership and I like biology. I also like, I, I really like Tinker. Can I get Tinker to 50? Probably not. I can get it to 50, but that's it. Grant use of... All right, so rank one, grant use of two utility slots for healing items or beer. Each point in the Tinker skill increases blast radius of... You know what? In each point in the Tinker skill increases blast radius of explosives by 1%. Grants use of three utility slots for healing items. This skill seems kind of garbage. Explosive will always crit. Chuck stuff further. Throw eligible items from utility slot. Throwing distance increases by 2.2%. Yeah, I'm not going to be a thrower. I'll keep this at wherever the base was. I'm not going to throw... I'm not throwing grenades. Just max out leadership. What is what is max leadership? All companions gain five initiative at the start of combat. Character selects an enemy to afflict with marked, giving allies 20% damage and accuracy. Marking an enemy requires one less action. 
Gain another permanent two initiative, total of plus five. Okay, yeah, that's factored in. When this character ends their turn, all allies within five meters gain inspired, giving them plus three initiative. So just tons of initiative all around. In addition, whenever this character makes a crit, mm, that means I have to attack. <laughs> Still, he just talks his way in, then blows the place up. Is this character creation or leveling up? I am still creating my character. Hey, PP. What's up, bud? I'm, I'm behind. I'm very behind on chat. What's up, dragon? So no near stream? Does this look like a near stream to you? An hour in and you're still creating your character? Yes. Is it that detailed? No, maybe. I don't know. I've been talking a lot. Dude, it's a stream. I've been talking a lot. And I've been weighing my decisions. What does opportunist give you? Ooh. Help yourself to a free ace. Help yourself to a free ace swipe at enemies doing a runner. Oh, it's attack of op. Chance to make an attack on enemies moving out of melee range. Attack of opportunity. No, it's not a near stream, and I'm unsubbing because of it. Huh. I'll show him. I'm going to dislike the stream and unsubscribe. Ha! No. Thought it was a way to get more options in conversation. Wouldn't that be nice? I don't think any of these really do. It's possible. This could be like Fallout New Vegas where any one of these skills could do that. I like drunken. I, like, I kind of want to do. Combat? Do I just want to heal? I feel like I can't do pacifist. Which means I need to shoot stuff. Keep your finger on the trigger and your eyes down your sides. Prepare an attack. You know what? I, I this is fine. I'm just gonna spend point. We'll see. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like I can't go wrong with leadership, right? Buffing up my allies, can't go wrong. Let's get it to rank 50, and then we'll spend the rest of the points in punt. Can't go wrong with punt either. Punt is like, punt's good, leadership, anything else? Tinker. That way I can understand this coal person. I've got six more points. Let's get drunk. You can handle your liquid courage and use it in a scrap. Gain a number of bonuses from consuming alcohol. While tipsy, drunk, or shit-faced, <laughs> increase the damage this character's attacks deal by 0.2% per point. That's kind of cool. Drunken master. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a social, I'm a social character. Uh, report all of your videos for terrorism. Somebody's about to get terrorized. Drunken master must give drunken speech skills. That's what I'm thinking. Leadership's really good though. I mean, at the very least, leadership is going to buff all of my allies. And if I just lean, like if I get forced into combat, I can just lean on the allies with leadership and punt. Right. And I guess tinker and bio, like these skills. That's fine. I do expect Drunken Master dialogue options to pop up. <sighs> no, no shame in carrying a self-defense weapon as a pacifist. That is the opposite of what a pacifist is. Well, not, not the opposite, but... Carrying 
charismatic Maki. <laughs> I'm a social character until I get a few ones in me. He crossed me and he didn't do it near stream. I'm pretty sure I said from the beginning that I wasn't going to do it. I haven't, even, I haven't barely even touched near. I'm still in the tutorial. I'm working. I got like a lot going on. I got a new setup, new game, new job. All right, start the journey. It's only been an hour. Well, chicken, here we are. Kogabi's come a long way since the last time the I was out game about, voice? but I imagine it's all still pretty underwhelming, given where you're from. If the full game is voiced, I'm going to be super impressed. I was so I was so surprised that it was voiced that I <laughs> barely paid attention. Uh, well, chicken, here we are. Cocoa bees come a long way since the last time I was out and about. It's voice and I'm still reading the lines. Still plenty underwhelming given where you're from. Okay. Estonia isn't much bigger. Ooh, they took away my dialogue options. Or they took away my... Surprise, they have two rocks to bang together to make a fire. I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask about Frida. How long has it been? No, it's not all voice. Rip. So close. Man, it's really hoping. Wasn't in the budget for this indie game, sadly. 15 years, give or take, means I gotta read all this. Ugh. 15 years, give or take. Brent would never have wanted me to become a recluse, but then there are a lot of things that should have turned out different. She clears her throat and pats her hand, pats your hand affectionately. Well, never mind that. Anyhow, you've got a big trade to make if you want to go back home with your head held high. Need any tips before you join Mick and Jess for your trip to Brookton? Your name's Chicken. I think that's just a nickname Frida has for me. Also, the tutorial near is really depressing if you know the full context is hidden. I feel like they should just do full voice acting or no voicing. Doing both breaks the immersion. PP, you can't make someone play a game if they don't want to. Anyways, uh, Xenoblade. <laughs> Um, no, I'm fine with I'm fine with the mix. I'm fine with a mix of voice and known. Persona does it. It does suck when you get to the no voice parts after enjoying Makoto Nijima's soothing sounds. Why did my parents send me with you? What tips do you have for me? Tell me about Brookton. Tell me about Brookton. Hey, Chepe. Can't watch this because I want to play it blind, but just dropping by to give it a heart. Also, I killed Margaret. I saw that you killed Margaret. It was in my activity feed on Steam. Congrats. I hope you, if you're planning on getting this game, I hope you enjoy it. Character creation was lengthy. Probably already out of here. Take it easy, Chepe. Thank you. Chepe is planning on getting this game. Uh, Brookton, nice place, families, children. Haven't been there in years myself. Then how do you know? You don't know shit. It's been years. That place could be overrun by Negan and his gang. Haven't been there in years, but Sally used to run the pub. If you see her, say hi from me. All right, I'm looking for Sally. Frida sends her regards. What tips you have for me? Don't get fleeced. Wow. Thanks, Frida. She laughs at your expression and pulls a two-way radio off her belt. You're not sure if a deal is good? Give me a bell. Got your dad's eye for people watching, though. I doubt you'll need little old me. Why did my parents send you with me? Or send me with you? It's a long story. You've got more important things to worry about. But I want to know. She sighs, closes her eyes, and takes a deep breath. When she lets it out and looks at you, she's a different person. Older. 
wearier. You know Brent was killed by raiders a long time ago. What you don't know is how. He was out on the trail, like he was so often back then. I didn't think anyone knew about our little shack on the lake. And he was always so careful to separate from the caravans before coming home. So when I saw the torchlight coming through the trees, I let them in. When he got back, they were lying in wait. Your mom tried to convince me it wasn't my fault that I could have been that I couldn't have warned him anyway. She smiles weakly. This is part of her bid to get me to crawl back out of my shell. She knew I could never say no to you. She ducks her hair back behind her ears. But this is about you and finding something to take back home and make your parents proud. If I can help you, it would be my honor. Have a good stream, y'all. Take it easy, Chepe. What's up, Captain Manjo? Welcome. Uh, let's see. What kind of trade should I be looking for? Anything you haven't seen elsewhere, really. Or something you know someone would pay top dollar for. Most of being part of a crew is figuring out what people want before they know of the need themselves. Talk to people, get the lay of the land, and keep your eyes peeled for unique opportunities. That's all. It still takes a lifetime to learn, but you'll get the hang of it. What you got for sale? Splitting stacks. When browsing a shop, you may see a number in the bottom right corner of an item, indicating how many of that item. Are, listen, this ain't my first rodeo. All right. Who's? This is nobody's first game. You don't have to tell me what a stack, how, to, how a stack works. To split a stack, right click and drag to move one item from that stack. Ooh, but how do you move multiple? Oh my gosh. All right. Oh, I don't have multiples of anything. I just want to say that it drives me absolutely ballistic that the shop's inventory is on the left and my inventory is on the right. Have Has anyone ever done seen this? Imagine explaining punt points to some. Yeah, imagine going through that entire character creator and then being like, "What's a stack? What does this number at the bottom right of this of this icon mean?" You're on the other side of the world. They do things. Is this an Australian thing where the shop is on the left and your inventory is on the right? Is this an Australian thing? What are they doing over there in the outback, the upside down world? All right, we got medicinal herbs. Stores 12 hit points and cures poison. Why eat rue when you can eat mushrooms? <laughs> Why eat rue when you can eat mushrooms? <laughs> Fruit, get that good shit in you. <laughs> All right, so the writing let me ask Midna. Yeah, we gotta. I haven't talked to Midna in a minute. <laughs> I'm gonna ask her about inventories, shop inventories. So far, the writing has been pretty good. Get that good shit in you. That's what fruit is. The complete package of fiber, carbs, and probably even one or two vitamins. And minerals. Potatoes, hot potato, hot potato. Restores five. Man, they could have put boil and mash up stick them in a stew. I was wondering how long we could bash Australia before she chimed in. She hasn't been in the stream in a minute. I'm not sure if she's going to chime in. I think she's usually available Fridays. Maybe. Soap is used for cleaning yourself or others if you're into that. <laughs> if you're into it. A uh, small water bottle is enough here to wet your whistle for a while. 
A bottle filled with this much water is hard to come by. Drink responsibly. Restores 10 inch hit points and removes burning. You can remove burning with, bo with bottled water. I want some soap. I'm going to be honest. I want some soap. How much money do I have? 125 bucks? I can afford five bucks for a bar of soap. Let's make it two. I'm going to drop 10, 10 bucks into some soap. A small glass bottle filled with water restores two hit points. A milk bottle. Um, I want a milk bottle of water. I'm curious that if I drink it, I, I can't, I can't extinguish. I can't remove burning with this, but I'm curious if I get that bottle back. Matter of fact, I'll buy some, I'll buy some stuff. I got a small water bottle, milk bottle, two bars of soap. I don't know what any of this stuff does other than the description, but um, yeah. I have a grenade. The tried and true. Oh, I've already got some bottle water. And a sandwich. All right, so how do I make a deal? Huh. Okay. Cha ching I wonder if our inventory resets. Just checking. There's probably a way to reset it. Actually, love, could you run an errand for me? I promised Sarah Taylor down Brookton Way that I'd get her some distilled water. See if we might start water. a partnership. I'm not so good around crowds, though. Do you mind? She holds out the bottle of water until you take it. Last but not least, I've arranged for Ian Mason, the mercenary over there, to give you a combat refresher. Talk to him once you've finished all your trading. Another Ian. Great. Right, I better head over to my stall. You can catch me there if you need anything. Travel safely, Chuck. All right, player camera and movement. Why are they talking like the dogs in Bluey? Five bucks is about the price you can expect to pay per bar of Dr. Squatch, all natural cold pressed handmade soap. <laughs> Good ad read, PP. Is the grenade your only weapon currently? Currently, yeah, but I'm about to do a combat tutorial. Maybe they'll give me a weapon there. To move your character around the map, left click on an area. White circles appear on the ground to show what your character and party members are walking towards. Left click is also used to speak to other characters and interact with certain objects in the world. To indicate this, your mouse icon will change depending on what you're hovering over. Pan your character, you can either push your mouse against the edge or use WASAD or hold the middle mouse button and drag in any direction. The bottom left of your screen are six icons. From left to right, they are party inventory, character sheets. Wait, six icons. Inventory, character sheets, moral compass, journal, map, menu. You can also access the learn menu via the journal, which was this one, to read more about the features of Broken Roads. Okay. There's a, there's a freaking kangaroo right there. Ew, it's inverted, ew. So if I hold the middle mouse button and go right, the camera pans left. Disgusting. Can I change that? Uh, show unavailable. Listen, I am so curious about the unavailable moral choices, but I feel like it will. I need. I got. I got to see them. I want to see them. Y'all want to see them? Use Noongar. That was Noongar. Noongar. Noongar are Aboriginal Australian people who live in the southwest corner of Western Australia. I'm assuming they have a different calendar. Interesting. 
Large font. There you go. Accessibility. Toggle object labels. Sure. This is fine. Fine. Camera pan. Ooh, quick save. Thank you. Yeah. I can't interact with the dingoes. Don't run away. Let me talk to you. Speak with animals. Should have played a gnome. All right, let's go talk to Ian. You're a bard, not a druid. Hey, forest gnome bard when I'm I played busy. Baldur's Gate 3. My first playthrough. Ian Mason has the stance of someone who's seen other people with military training but never been through it himself. He reeks of sweat and his camo is obviously the wrong color for the surrounding terrain. <laughs> Ian's a poser. <laughs> he has the stance of someone who's seen other people with military training but never seen through it himself. He reeks of sweat and his camo is obviously the wrong color for the surrounding terrain. He's a cosplayer. <laughs> what do you want, kid? Looking for a real man to show you how to use a gun? Um. All right. Free to said, you give me some combat training. What's your deal? Need a hand? Ever thought about joining the scouts? All right, let's do it. This one first. Not yet, you don't chook. Is that a slur? Come in. Oh, it's a chicken. Affectionate nickname given by older Australians. Chook. Get on that other business before you do the fun stuff. Wait, other... You heard the boss. I'm the fun stuff. Come back later. <laughs> I'm the fun stuff. All right. Your trusty journal records any currently active main quest and side quests. Updates objectives, keeps track of you. I know what a journal is. Monday, January 1st, 2131. Keen as a bean to get stuck into bartering today. Mate. <laughs> Yaka means hard work. Mate, term of endearment, insult, or irony, depending on the context. <laughs> I'm glad the Australians need to be translated. All right, we got tutorials or adventures. We'll find out later. Failed quest tabs is interesting. Yeah, it's probably... You know, key NPC dies that I had to protect or a timer. Look at this guy. This guy is ready for Halloween. Uh, okay. Get your trade goods from the camel cart. All right, I can do that. train yes, it does it looks like the fog as I just as I uncover as I clear the fog of war it uh it remains clear like look, I, I can look where I've been so that's cool just exploring the map 
getting a feel for things. What's a camel car? I don't know. I'm looking for a camel. The best part about the trading post is that they want visitors. No one's going to come through if you're, if you've got a toilet covered in shit, nice and clean. Outhouse. The whole shebang that makes Coca B worth trading. Trading at. Barter crews can arrange to meet up or make requests when the bloody thing's working, that is. Oh, for the for that radio tower. Ah, oh, there's a cam. <laughs> Sounds like Homer. <laughs> what the hell is this thing? What is this? What kind of freakish mythological being is that? An emu? Is that what that is? Big Fosh. It's for the camels, mate. Go get your own food. All right, hold on. I want to talk to... We're free to go. Cobbler who show up from time to time. Got a missing cobbler. Get on with it. You want a tip? Always bring a hat. No. Oh, speaking of which, can I look at my inventory? Party inventory. The party inventory shows your party's equipped items, money, and goods you collected along your journey. This serves as a shared stash of items, but it's not accessible within, within combat. So be sure to equip your characters with weapons and utility items before battle. To equip and unequip, move them into their correct slots. For example, you could left click to drag and drop a hunting knife from your inventory over the pistol to replace it. You wish to split a stack right click. Yeah. But I don't have a hunting knife. I do have a shotgun. Drop Bear Beer. Drop Bear, I believe, is the name of the developers. So this is... If you're, if you're curious, this is a reference to the developers. Drop Bear Beer. Shotgun and a hammer and a grenade. You remind me of a guy I punched in the face a while back. <laughs> Don't mind him. He's got his knickers in a knot because he can't take a joke. What I wouldn't give for an ice cold beer right about now. Hey, can I give him a beer? Dapper, Dapper is as Dapper does. Uh, Welcome to Kirkby, stranger. The effervescent teenager. I've never heard that word. Giving off bubbles, fizzy. The effervescent teenager is an, in an outdated conductor's uniform, salutes you neatly as you approach. A polished silver whistle swings on a chain at her hip. can always smell a good deal, and you, my friend, are carrying something that's going to make my day. 
You're not getting my grenade, Tina. She smiles, the dimples on her cheeks making her look even younger. Care to trade? Um, let's see. With the outfit, I like your uniform. Are you in charge here? Yup. She pulls out a shining silver pocket watch and holds it up for you to see. Mount Kokobi is engraved on the front in fine handwriting around an embossed steam engine. Station Master's timepiece. She slips it back into the fob pocket of her pants. Gives it a little pat. Anyone gives you grief, you come to me. I don't know what time it is, though. Spring's been busted for years. Um, I like your uniform. Thanks. She gives you a delighted smile. I found it when I was cleaning out those trains for people to stay in. It was tucked away under a console in the cab like it was waiting just for me. She puts her arms out and does a spin to let you appreciate the uniform from every angle. I like Tina. No, Noah thought it, no, oh, Noah thought it suited me anyway. Uh, who's Noah? Noah's my brother, but he's four years older than me, so he's more like my father. She chews on the inside of her cheek as she considers you. Yeah, you're probably about the same age. Um... Where is he? Or he left you here all alone. Uh, where is he? Dunno. Signed up with a barter crew. Haven't seen him since. He said something about sowing his wild oats. I really hope he hasn't become a farmer, though. She fills with a whistle at her hip. He's beyond terrible with plants. Anyway, why do you care? I've got everything you need. She gestures at her stall. I want to trade. Your brother left you here all alone. I've been running Kokobi just fine without his help. Thank you very much. Her tone is crisp. He can stay gone for all I care. Ooh, animosity detected. Uh, got any news? She thinks for a moment. Yeah, Demo. Demo's mate is in a bad way. It's a big ask, but he probably needs some medical attention if you're the kind who give it. Don't know if that'll be enough, though. Damo. Where's he at? Alright, let's check her stock. Tina's got milk bottles with camel mix. Oh, no, excuse me, camel milk. Camels have become the main source of dairy since the cows all went teats up after the big bash. Freshly milked camel milk. Restores 10 hit points. Tiny but mighty. Restores 30 hit points plus any bonuses from the user's skill or attributes. Cures poison, removes bleed. Peas. Eat your greens. They're good for you. Wheat's the basis for any good damper. Hot potatoes. Nothing I want. Hmm. She taps her lips with a finger, narrowing her eyes at you. Very strange. Nothing special to trade, but you've still got that air of potential about you. I know. Oh, there's Frida. Watch out, Chook. She's about to fleece you. She grins at Frida. No better. I want you. She punctuates her sentence with a stab of her index finger. To convince our solar panel peddling friend over there to give me the only thing I've ever truly wanted in this life. <laughs> True love. <laughs> Some courage. Your brother back. I love all of these. Let's go with what is it? I want that. <laughs> You follow her gaze to the solar panel stall, salesman's stall, a flat black outline of a cat with a shiny marble for an eye tilts occasionally in the wind. Get it for me and I'll sing your praises far and wide. 
You help her out, Choke. It'll be good practice. Word of God, anything else before you get me my cats? Come back anytime. All right, let's grab the cat. Excuse me, sir. What do you want for the cats? Friend, welcome to Kokobi and the energy source of the future. See anything you like? Greets you with a dazzling smile and arms held wide. He gestures at the array of solar panels littered around his stall, his chip, his clip on fan bobbing dangerously with the movement. Um, let's see. Let's start with what he got for sale. Maybe I should buy something. Ethics. Hatred is increased by being reciprocated and can, on the other hand, be destroyed by love. Ethics. See, he sells scrap. All right, solar panel, the gentleman's energy source. Car battery, standard 12 volt, lead acid, chargeable car battery. Copper wiring keeps the lights on back home. Silicon sealant. Keep your solar panels crack free on those windy days. Why is... Oh, okay, never mind. I guess these don't stack. Red safety vest. Atreides' best friend. One agility, 10 hit points. Ooh, I can't afford it. A simple but useful tool. That, this is a screwdriver. That doesn't require much training to figure out. Can also be used to tighten screws. You don't say. And then scrap. You never know when this will come in handy. Repairs, mods, armor improvements, or even just a trade. There's always demand for useful scrap. I just realized this kind of reminds me of OG Fallout 1. The developers said that they were strongly inspired by Fallout 1. Matter of fact, the Steam page, I believe it was on the Steam page. Uh, like it's in the description born out of a love for traditional computer role-playing games from franchises such as pillars of eternity disco elysium fallout wasteland tyranny pathfinder and Baldur's game yeah. it's literally in the first line of the description for the game Um, sorry, I'm recording. I'm trying, to rec I'm just trying to record. My recording ended when I alt tabbed. Oh, uh, he didn't have the tin cat in his inventory, so I guess I have to ask about it. What makes solar panels so special? I'll ask that first. We're going to warm up to him. Mate. He holds up a hand drawing the moment drawing the moment out far past anyone's comfort level i can tell you're new to the energy game he leans in close these guys don't give a rat's ass about keeping informed but me i know my work when it comes to energy you've got three choices dig up some black stuff and set it on fire use that big old fire orb up in the sky or run water through some turbines or some shit. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't see a whole lot of water nearby and I hate getting dirt under my fingernails. The writing in this game. I'm actually gonna make a note of that. How's the game so far? The writing is amazing. The dialogue and the writing, I'm enjoying. Well the monologue what's special about solar it's the gentleman's energy source gives you a painfully awkward week in civilization my friend that's the way of the future finally runs out of steam and gives you a supposedly charming smile so what do you say want to invest in a better brighter you if i could afford it how much for the tin cat tina's admitted she wants it has she he preens a little 
new old rusty there'd bring me a windfall one of these days well nothing's free tell you what he taps his chin considers you tapping his chin you give me some parts for my pokey machine and i'll give you the cat fair shake a good deal or a fair chance Can't you just sell me the cat? But I don't want to do that. Um, your what? My pokey machine. He points over his shoulder at something with colorful pictures and numbers behind dusty glass. It's going to make me a fortune down in Arda. All right. Oh, so how is the game? Uh, it's, I mean, so far, so far is meeting expectations. So far, it has it has it is meeting my expectations. Haven't done combat yet. I'll get back to you on combat, but um, yeah, running around talking to people, exactly what I expected. Good old Ian Mason's got some. I saw them lying around his haystack over there. Not that he knows what people dump nearby, but I can spot a good sprocket a mile away. Now, want to buy some solar? Um, maybe come back later. soon. You can press and hold tab to highlight items, points of interest, and show NPC names. You don't say. Didn't notice that. One more bottle. I have just enough water to make it back to Meriden. Meriden? If I don't get robbed first. I hear old timers used to complain about quality over quantity. What a life. <laughs> what kind of town doesn't even have rats? Rats are how you know you're civilized. How's it going? Everyone treating you all right? Can you tell me? Can you tell me a bit about the other traders here? Sure. Do you want to know? Who do you want to know about? Uh, who's the girl in the outfit? Tina, lovely bub. Or she was when I was last here. Knew her da. Good man. If she's half of him. She'll be better than most. Uh, tell me about Mr. Plaid. Gerald, ask him for a discount. Who's the camo guy? Ian Mason, Merc. I've heard things, of course, but, well, you need to know how to defend yourself. Just don't take any crap from him. You think I need to know about Mick? Don't get on his bad side. She's more serious than you've ever seen her. He's a solid ally, but the man's a demon. Take my word on it, Chook. He's fair, but that doesn't mean he's kind. Remember that. Who is Jess? Jess is a gem. Such a patient, thoughtful person. She'll steer you right. Never doubt it. Uh, Tell me about Brookton. Travel safely, Chuck. Where's the camel cart? Oh, she's told me to ask for a discount. Oh, I knew you'd be back. What can I get you? Ah, dis. His voice squeaks and he coughs, then tries again. A discount. Oh, a dis in the <laughs> Mate, you ought to be pulling my leg. Do you have any idea how hard it is to clean these bastards up? Haul them halfway across the country and keep all the sand and shit from getting in? A discount? I'd sooner get caught with my pants around my ankles when the dunny falls fall down. A discount. <laughs> Come on, Jerry Jezza J Money. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. A discount? <laughs> Thanks for the laugh, mate. I needed that. <laughs> G'day. Name's Damo. Hey, there's Damo. The young man stands up straight, bouncing his foot restlessly as you approach. He has a smear of grease under one eye and a dusty mop of unattended hair held at bay by a weathered, beaten cap. Everyone needs fuel. Black gold's rarer than actual gold these days. I got petrol, diesel, whatever you need. All right. 
to our gas man. Best prices this side of Meriden, or I'll eat my hat. The old man sitting next to him groans, head lolling on his shoulders. He's covered in a fine black dust like he's been rolling around after a bushfire. A thin sheen of sweat glistens on his cheeks, but his lips are as dry as the desert air. Damo looks at him in concern. Steady on now, old fella. He speaks with forced Javiat. Game ain't messing around. The quality in a person of being friendly and in good mood. Joe Viality? I can't get the pronunciation. Dunny is a toilet. Looks like fun. Am I ready to rate it? No. Are you ready to make a review video on it? No. I haven't even done the first quest. There's a tenderness in his face that his worry can't quite conceal. I heard from Tina that your mate needs help. What can I do? We got into a bit of trouble at the refinery and Sid ended up copping the worst of it. He said everything was fair dinkum. Real or true. But now his hair's falling out and he hasn't eaten in three days. Radiation sickness. You know, all he probably needs is some iodine. I've got a doctor friend down Brookton Way. She'd help him, especially if you told her I sent you. Jesse is a good sort. Mick will grumble about wasting resources, but he won't dare to argue. Jesse can be damn bloody minded when she wants to be. Yeah, his face lights up then falls again, but I've got to stay here to sell fuel. Maybe I will once we sell a few more cans. Thanks, mate. Thank you so much. I'd shake your head, but I've had the runs for the past six days. You don't want to know what I've been using for toilet paper. The pleasure's on me. A violent tremor shakes him from head to toe. Sid's not gonna make it. We'll be back once he's convinced Jess to let you ride with him. I told you there were good people out here. came back does this mean you're ready to go from a bottle of water thanks uh not yet <coughs> help Tina get her black hair wait You would draw my hearts for trade. Let's see to get her black cat decoration. Wait, so can I talk to Ian yet? About that combat training now gerald says you got some machine parts all right let's say i do but i want you to get me something in exchange what's with you people in your unending request let me ask that let me guess i have to go ask frida for it all right i'm gonna go with what's the job there's a guy who lives out in the sticks here ish he points to a spot on your map he's got a camo helmet i want it Bring me that and you can scrounge to your heart's content. What's to stop me from grabbing the parts while your back's turned? How do I know you're not sending me in an ambush? I'll be back.
Guy's got a cleaver. And they said you couldn't hack it. Hunting knife. Invaluable in and out of combat. Can be used to get multiple strikes off in a single round. Stab it, cut it, slice it, hack it. Small saw. Hand saw for holding in your hand or sawing one off. Got some red kangaroo meat. Hop this onto your plate for a fair dinkum meal. Stores five. Kangaroo pelts that have been expertly cleaned. Could be emu, could be rue, could be one of your mates. It all tastes like chicken and sometimes it's best not to ask questions. I am going to change the controls I'm going to add wait how do I change wait oh you can't change the control what this is that's so weird what are these blanks for I guess they haven't implemented changing controls yet This is going in my review. The nerve can't change the controls. You'll be this will be in my review. All right. What I wanted to do is I was going to change one of the mouse buttons to to show so that I didn't need the keyboard. You can almost play this game without the keyboard. I haven't done combat yet though. Sid, Demo, Gerald, Frida. Some meat. Fresh meat. Oh, this is the camel. It's got to be the camel cart. Hey, camel cart. Great for tying your shit down during a sandstorm. There's rope, bandages. Gimme, gimme, gimme. loot a bin with useful rags these can be cleaned up into bandages or used as is to restore five hit points removed bleeding large empty water bottle milk bottle empty ah, i knew you could get bought empty bottles I knew it it's a two liter bottle and it's dry as a bone but bottles like these are hard sought after by just about everyone empty bottle opens up a world of possibilities beer water milk blood you name it is there a weight? No, nothing has a weight, so I'm assuming that's not a thing in this game. Container's locked up tight. All right, then. Keep something. Keep your tires. Talk to the stranger. How's the road been treating you? Been good, stranger. It's a cool breeze blowing out the open door. Some blokes get all the luck. Not enough to cook on, just from the sun. Keeping all these panels clear of debris and sand must be one hell of a job. Reduce, reuse, recycle, unless you can smash it, then go for your life. All right, let's do combat training. Welcome back. He grins, showing too many teeth. Um, how about combat training? 
He looks to Frida, who shakes her head. Sorry, kiddo. Denied for now. What, what the f... Whatever. So what do I do? All right, back one moment. I start my new job. Start my new job tomorrow. But they haven't told me where to go. It's a little concerning, right? I have no idea where to go tomorrow. They they finally told me a time. I texted him this morning. I was like, hey, didn't you say it was remote? I still have to go to the office to like pick up my stuff. Like it's remote, but I have to use a work computer. Presumably. So, and I probably have to meet with HR about stuff. So. There's probably paperwork I got to fill out. Honestly, don't know. I definitely need my computer. I definitely need, like, to get set up. So, I got to at least go in for that. All right. I can't get the black cat until I get the camo helmet. Can't practice guns. Bring distilled water to Sarah Taylor at the clinic. Have I met Sarah yet? Someone's a bit of a pack rat or people dump trash here at night as you not so, as a not so subtle fuck you. I would have known about the tab thing the first time I went exploring. Another stranger. I'm we'll talking to this person. She gives you the shortest of glances before returning her gaze to the horizon. Yeah. Uh, who are you? Lynn. She stares off past your shoulder. What do you do? Surveyor. Seems she's not very talkative. Got any tips? Don't die. <laughs> What's wrong? Cat got your tongue. She takes the time to look at you until she has your full attention. If you're not a surveyor, you're not worth my time. Excuse me? Lie. Oh, but I am a surveyor. I'm in disguise. Huh. Uh, hmm. Your face is nowhere in the ledger. Don't waste my time. Don't hurry back. <laughs> Worth a shot, I guess.
WASD is so much better. How's it going? Everyone treating you all right? Set me up with Gerald. You knew he wouldn't give me a discount. I know, but it's funny. Pretty sure you can forgive me, right? There's a good laugh. Travel safe, we took. Forgive you, yes, but yes, but trust, not anymore. I think I'm ready to just to go. Oh wait, where's the map? Dusty's shack, Tina's huts. The map shows an elevated view of your current location with the unexplored areas hidden beneath fog of war. It displays landmarks you've come across while in the area and helps you plan where to go next. Lynn. This is a really, this is a pretty map. This is pretty. You came back. Does this mean you're ready to go? Passes a shaking hand in front of his eyes. Fuck, mate. Can't you wait? <laughs> Can't you wait until I'm not shitting my jocks while also bleeding from every fucking orifice? The outburst seems to have taken a lot out of him. Need mate. some fuel? Anything good around these parts? Now, everything's been pretty much picked clean from for scavies like us, I mean. The big scores are out west, though. Through, wait. Through Perth? After our last trip, last trip, I never want to see that skyline again. What happened on your last trip to Perth? Fire. Our crews turned to work the, the refinery. Someone forgot to oil the parts. Or maybe they didn't clean everything properly last time. Glances at Sid. I know you said sabotage, but I don't see why anyone would bother. The tank was almost dry as it was. You don't need a plan to be an asshole. True. Who do you think sabotaged the refinery? Riley's Rippers. He shifts slightly, slightly in his chair. The effort exhausts him. Bunch of punks. He stares at Sid in horror. You know them? You're too young for that, kid. Closes his eyes and leans back, clearly unwilling to discuss the subject further. Who are Riley's Rippers? His voice is a low growl. If you have to ask, you shouldn't know. A tremor shakes him. And if you find out, you wish you hadn't. How come the oil tank was running dry? Everything's got to run out sometime. He shrugs. My old man said the tank farm used to be like a forest, and now it's like a clear-cut scrub. Doesn't help that the tank exploded when the fire caught and raced back along the pipeline. That doesn't matter, he shakes his head. There's more. Then he sees you and coughs. More important things to whinge about. Let's see that fuel. We got petrol, the lifeblood of any machine still puttering along. Diesel, your oot's going nowhere without a can of this. Your oot. Molotov set the world on fire. Molotov clear and brown. Barbed wire roll. A barbed wire roll a day keeps the raiders away. Radio, keep in touch with civilization no matter where you are in the outback. I want this. 80 bucks? I want this. 
empty bucket. Also with the bu bucket. A bucket that's never been patched up is as rare as hen's teeth these days. Drop bear beer. A 375 milliliter sip of heaven that also increases initiative in combat somehow. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> that's pretty, that's funny. I want this radio. It's gonna like, it costs all my money though. Almost all of my money. I'll be, I'll be back for that. I'll be back. Good luck out there. You came back. <laughs> How's it going? Everyone treating you all right? Travel safely, Chuck. I'm not sure what to do here. Hey, look. Still no discounts, I'm soon. afraid. With what? The camel dung or the bloody flies? He waves his hand in an Aussie salute. Go pick up all the shit you like. I won't stop you. Uh, what's your deal? My deal? He spares you an amused glance. My deal is that I'm the only thing standing between these bogans and a slow death in the sun. There'd be no Kokobi if I wasn't protecting the whole place. Everyone would be too scared to set up shop. Like you and whoever else crawled out from under a rock to limp here. Ever thought about joining up with the scouts? That ramshackle outfit? I'd rather kiss my own face with a tire iron. Whatever. I'd rather kiss my own face with a tire iron. Oakney Heights. Ask Jess about putting Sid in the camel. Which one was Jess? Have I met Jess? I think I have. I thought that yellow marker was my objective. That yellow marker is me. sure how to get out of here. Is there a key to focus on my character? Center camera space. It does not seem to be working. Okay, 
space or as much space more works. Center camera, space. I feel lied to. Need some fuel? Good luck, yep. You came back. Is this. <coughs> Can I ask him questions? You came back. Can I do? Come back any time. Uh, I don't know how to get out of here. Help Tina get her black cat. Practice gun craft with Ian. Bring the distilled water to Sarah. Taylor at the clinic. Say hi to Sally in Brookton. Um, I'll try to leave. Oh, the, oh, oh, there's a little door icon. Okay. Travel to Oakney Heights. Yes. The question is not can they reason or can they talk, but can they suffer? Auto save complete and some other things. This bloke decided to quit while he was ahead. <laughs> Keeps lights on. Found some copper. Some valuable stuff. Tiny. Give Lee's a chance. Oh, thank you. Sophie Johnson. Her her tone is smug, her movements languid. Well, 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 what do we have here? Three holes in the ground. She shoots him a look that could strip paint. Oh, rhetorical. I get it. Looks like we caught ourselves a fellow scavenger. Well, fellow scavenger, care to give us the goss on how you came to find old Who's It's Shack all by your lonesome? Uh, can't we talk about this? Or I don't want any trouble. I think you'll find I'm not the talkative type. Are you kidding me? Chris said the next time she heard you complain, she was going to kick your face till teeth started coming out of your ears. Now. That's a nice belt you've got there and nice boots. I'll try not to get too much of your blood on them. Take them out. What? So much for the pacifist route. Different weapons are more effective depending on the distance from the target. Pistols and shotguns work well up close. Rifles for medium, sniper rifles a little farther away. Experiment with different weapons at varying distances to work out optimal range. Oh, this music, this is good.
all of my skill points went into leadership, which affects my allies. I have no allies. I'm in a bit of a situation right now. Hunt, leadership. Movement. Okay, so I have four movement points. And I'm, yeah, this is action. These are my skills. All right. While in combat, you can use healing items to heal yourself and your companions. To heal, you must select the item on the radio wheel, then use left click when hovering over yourself or a team member when close enough. Okay. Using a melee weapon from a distance, if the target is reachable, your character will approach them. Spending movement. Certain weapons cannot be fired at point blank, forcing an enemy to move away, incurring a possible opportunist attack with your melee weapon. Oh no. It cost action points. No. What have I done? I'm in trouble. Ooh. Three misses? Let's go. Bandages, restores 15 hit points, removes bleeding, burning. Cost three action, though. That's, a, that's all my action. Come on. I'm about to die. that combat was or I don't know how to avoid that combat it would really suck if I can't just be like total pacifist all right let's try that again
nails. Keep your camel carts together. Tune Tutor, baby's first instrument. For little scamps who love to annoy their older siblings. Bag of dollars. When you're all out of camels, top up your trade with some coins from before. Some bandages. What up, Sam? How you doing, Hannibal? Welcome back. I am just exploring right now. Have to pick a fight with some bandits. Fun game so far, yeah. I think so. So far, I think so. Would love some party members though. Seeing as how I built uh built for. This lone wanderer could use a lick of paint. Fine collection of du Duvalackies, jig, jiggers, thingamabobs, and whatsits. Ah, yes, the whatsits. All right, let's trigger. Uh... Oh, I found them. Oh, that was the military helmet that I picked up. Uh, let's see. Flavor like cutter cells. Here to give us the gospel on how you came to find old who's its shack all by your lonesome. Do I name drop Ian or do I? Or you first? Told you old dead eyes got it in for us. Shut up. It's a nice belt. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure you can avoid this combat. Fun game. Uh, good news, Sam. I bought the new rule books for Pathfinder. Feel better about when you see Hey, that's good news. Glad you feel comfortable. I don't really have a lot of tactical options. It's really just shoot. Shrug off damage, intimidate, forces an enemy to retreat, maybe? Strength may have been a good investment for Intimidate. Intimidate won't work on this guy. All right, Intimidate will not work on him. So how do I cancel? like that I don't like that switching weapons 
I don't know how to word it. Like the misclick of switching weapons. I didn't know how to back out of intimidate. I might need to test that. Sprint fail. All right, what is sprint? Transforms all remaining action into movement. Now, if I move, it's going to provoke, right? It's not. You fired your last round, your weapon must now reload. There's an infinite, wait, there is infinite ammunition, broken rows, but reloading does come at the expense of action. Retreat from combat. Just a coward. Oh, here's your helmet. Hand him the helmet. Thanks. Toss it into the shipping container behind him without looking. Enjoy your scavenging. Whatever. So now. Wait, am I supposed to be able to? the machine okay hey look it's mr date pockets <laughs> still no discounts i'm afraid i got the machine parts bloody brilliant takes the parts from you and his face lights up you've got an eye for sprockets too glad to meet a fellow connoisseur he pronounces it Con Iger. You managed to not flinch, but just barely. Gerald doesn't notice. Those uh those pop-ups on the left do not last long enough for me to read them. Sorry to say goodbye to you, kitty cat, but I've got a fortune waiting for me. Come back soon. What can I do for you? 
fifty dollars. Its emerald eyes follow you no matter where you stand. A candy trader would love this ferocious feeling. I knew you could do it. She takes the cat and plants it under the stall next to her hut. Oh, by the way, the quest said to sell it to her, so I just opened up her inventory and sold it to her. You just leveled up. Open the character sheet to assign your one attribute point and 10 skill points. There, you're not going anywhere. Giving it a final affectionate pat, she turns back to you. Thanks, friend. She spots some new arrivals. And would you look at that right on time? By that, you mean half a day late. She waves at sunbaked woman and overdressed man walking over from where they hitched their camels. Hi there, Tina. Lovely as the day is long, as always. Would have been here sooner, but someone got it in his brain that what the town needed was another pact with Alderside. I swear the poor kid they sent as their representative is probably still running as fast as he can. Some people have no patience for the finer points of diplomacy. Mick, I like you already. I suppose introductions are in order. I'm Mick Jones and this is Jess Brown. Runs Brookton's Barter Crew when I'm needed elsewhere. So you're a new face in this crowd. You're, you're in, you into forging alliances or do you prefer to rough it alone? Uh, working together is the only way to restore civilization. You've got to stick together if you want to get anything done. A group has more bargaining power than one person alone. Do you want my actual answer or the answer I think you want? Uh, I like working together is the only way to restore civilization. Oh, you're one of those. Well, it takes all kinds, I guess. I don't think you're, you'll find civilizations too grateful for your help, though. On that note, I think I'll check in on Frida. Pleasure to meet you. Reckon you'll change your tune by the time you reach my age, assuming you live well. Well, I better go pay my respects for these bludgers. Tell people I'm going soft. Come get me when you're done, and Jess and I will see you safely in Brooklyn. Character sheet tab gives you detailed information on your character and party members, skills and attributes, and current experience level. This is where you'll assign your skill and attribute points when you level up. I made it! Fina! Fina, I think you'll love this, this game. I think you'll enjoy this one. It's adorable so far. I want what was intimidate? Intimidation checks. It's just strength. Shooting, dead eye, vigilance. Drunken master. What do I invest? I guess I just dump all my points in leadership. Let's see. How are y'all? Y'all are just fine. How are y'all? have a already have a radio I don't know that. doing good that's good get Sid settled for the trip talk to Mick in the marketplace travel to Brookton practice gun craft with Ian stilled water to Sarah Sarah Taylor I don't know where that is where's the clinic I'll make sure the clinic's 
see if I can do training with Ian. Welcome back, he grins, showing too many teeth. About that combat training. Finally. You don't get something for nothing, though. You got to pay to play. How much you got? Uh-oh. Whatever it is, I'll cover it. His eyes never leave your face. Pity. After a moment, he stretches his arms wide, cracking his shoulders. Let's get this party started, then. Steps around behind you. Draw your gun. What you want to do is aim down the sight. Steps closer behind you, too close, and wraps his arms around you, taking hold of your wrists. Uh, stay still. Good boy, just like that. <laughs> Concentrate and squeeze. You feel him shift behind you, then he places his index finger over yours inside the trigger guard. Don't pull. You'll miss your target. Squeeze your butt cheeks together. <laughs> he makes an undignified noise and the shot goes wide, pinging off the edge of the shipping container. Yeah, look. Steps away from you, refusing to make eye contact. Why don't you take a crack at it by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Moral compass traits, don't you die? When in combat, your player character will take damage from an adjacent party member with less... When in combat, your player character will take damage for an adjacent party member with less hit points than you. That's cool. nods then pushes your gun arm down it's enough wasting bullets for today you did good whatever talk to Mick say hi to Sally in Brookton came back does this mean you're ready to go <coughs> why does it keep saying look at my inventory Take you to Brookton when you're ready to go. It always pays to travel in packs. Have a good trip, Chuck. I'll see you tonight. You plan to stay long? Nope. Heading back to Brookton as soon as we finish up. I'd have a lot more guns if we were staying overnight. What can you tell me about Coca Bee? Food here is atrocious. I heard that. Just kidding. Tina can grill a roost steak like nobody's business. What else do you want? Uh, let's see. What 
What are you talking about, Freya? Good sort, that one. She and I go way back. Haven't seen her in, the, in bloody ages. Of course, but she still holds the record for most goods hauled through Brookton. Hell on wheels if she gets a fire in her. I'm going to tell one of my strength to, secrets to new protege, Mick. Tone is harsh, but her eyes dance with laughter. Stories I could tell you about him would curl your toes and your pubes. They're not already. Pre-curled, but thanks for asking. Remain silent. Not taking the bait. Well, you tried. I want to get a new protege, though. I think this one's broken. This takes a little warming up, or maybe I've lost my touch. Something seems to occur to her. Or maybe she hasn't got any. It's the end of this conversation, then. You and Tina seem to go on. I've known her since before she could walk. You've never seen a baby so quick to grab hold of anything shiny. That's when I knew she was going to be all right. Do you know what happened to Tina's brother, Noah? Not that I'm willing to tell a damn near stranger. He gives you a look. Anything I knew, anything I knew, go to Tina first anyway. Don't go meddling in family affairs, general life advice. Who's the solar panel guy? Mr. Blue Flannel. Peers at him across the distance and shakes his head. I know just about everyone, but him, he's new. Probably won't last long. The mercenary is a real ray of fucking sunshine. Dead Eye Mason. Ask him. Ask about him in Meriden. Guy's a bloody legend in his own lunchbox. Arrogant without cause. Uh, give me some info on the kid with fuel. Dan was a good bloke. Trying to do right by his dad. God rest his soul. Much out for Sid, though. He's mean as cat's piss. Uh, want to trade? Everything we brought is spoken for. There's plenty of other options in Brooklyn. I'm all done here. Ready to go back. Come on then, Jess, Don, Bob. Well, if you know what's good for you, Mick. Have a good trip. See you tonight. Need to make sure we're all squared up with Tina before we roll out. We're going to get moving. Any last Duva Lackey duva lackeys you want to force into my pockets before we call it quits why you cheeky ankle biter i ought to right then we're on the road see you in a bit come on the sooner we get back to town the sooner you buy me a beer quest as you prepare to leave you hear her speaking tenderly to sid come on sid let's get you some help mark of an educated mind to entertain a thought without something go kick the dust off your boots it'll take a while to get our goods unpacked he nods towards a nearby building with a veranda pub's there if you want to wet your whistle just keep your crap opinions about the world to yourself for now Saul laugh you right out of town experience game Get Sid settled for the trip. Ask Jess about putting Sid. Damn it. Hold on. I want to go back. Damn. Should have saved. Just gonna blitz through blitz through the dialogue again and then save. Whatever. 
Got the helmets. Got the machine parts. Come back soon. Here for the cats. G'day. What can I do for you? Sell the cat. Here we go. I'm actually going to do utilitarian suit weapons. I'm not know anything with Kitchen Care. Level up. I don't remember. I think I just did charisma and leadership. Oh, this is Jesse. Always happy to see a new friendly face out here. I hope the road's been treating, treating you well. Could we give a six scabby a lift to Brooklyn on the back? There we go. I had to talk to this lady. Mick looks like he's about to say something, but she holds up her hand to stave him off. Sid's that bad, huh? Yeah, I'll shift some things around, get him over to the cart, and I'll handle the rest. I didn't talk to her at all. Who are you? Like Mick said, name's Jess, trader from out of Brookton. I mostly travel with Mick, but I've been known to go solo. And you look like newly minted barter crew. Claps you on the shoulder and grins. Welcome to the trails, brother. What do you do? I drive a camel cart between Brookton and Kokobee as part of a permanent trade route. Occasionally, I chance it and sleep out under the stars, but only when I know I won't get caught. Can you tell me about Kokobee? Why ask me when Tina's right there? Used to be a rail shop before the world went to hell. It became a trading post because people could follow the tracks. You come here often. Every couple of days, she scratches her cheek. It's not a bad run and Tina knows to hold the good stuff for us. Need anything? Nothing at the mo? Thanks for asking. She gives you a brief smile. Anything to trade? No, we're here picking up people's orders and stuff to sell back home. So that's that. All right, let's go through the combat training real fast. Have a good trip, Chook. I'll see you tonight. I heard that. After I get to Brookton, I'm going to save and then call it. Oh, I forgot to talk to Sid. Damn it.
You feel in this game, Sam? I am. I am. I'm going to play some more tomorrow, maybe, depending on how work goes. But yes, I am feeling it. Absolutely feeling it. You came back. Good to go. Sid's nod. Anyone helps to your feet. Throwing Sid across his shoulders. feeling this game i am feeling it so far combat's a bit meh combat's a bit meh but it's not really what i'm here for um i'll catch you up on brookton thanks again you have no idea how much this means to me takes one more look at sid pinches the bridge of his nose then walks back to his stall good luck out there need some fuel Good luck out there. Uh, let's see. One of my bulbs is going out. One of my bulbs in this room is going out. Have a good trip, Chook. I'll see you tonight. I heard that. Seems pretty chill. I'm gonna have to watch the beginning of the stream. How many Sam's does it take to change a light bulb? One and a ladder. But the thing is, I don't have any more of these bulbs. These are hard to come by. It's a, um, I think they're six feet. It's a six foot long fluorescent bulb. Sucks. My, so my seal so i have four lights uh, well four sets of two lights two of them are six feet and two of them are three feet one of the sets is out so my options are limited those are dangerous too aren't they uh are they dangerous? Buy a jackpot barter, bring the stilled water. Hopefully you find the bulbs easy. I might have to order some to be honest. I heard breaking them open is dangerous because some sort of gas and stuff. Oh yeah, you don't want to break them open. Oh, goodbye, shit, you don't do that. All right, it's a good three hour stream. Good stuff. So far, so good, I enjoyed it. I wonder what the reviews are mostly negative for real i'm enjoying it why are they not it's not only the roads that are broken in this game pretty much every mechanic is not well implemented combat's awful yeah i agree with that combat's not great you play behind scenery you know what this is gonna ruin the game i'm not gonna read it for i'm not gonna read it it's gonna ruin the game for me um what are they saying <sighs>
Wasteland is a classic setting, as you can pick from one of these things. Despite the feature list, name, store, page, inspiration, suits, me. How many hours do these people have? Eight hours on record. Record. Eight hours? The game hasn't even been out eight hours. Eight hours on record? Am I missing something? Well, I guess it, yeah, I guess it came out at noon. see trailer makes it look like fallout 2 it's vaguely like that ui is pretty janky i agree the ui is not great next to zero voiceovers that made me sad as well dialogue's pretty simplistic but plays out using a moral compass system it's a bit strange i think the dialogue's fine uh WSA, wasd movement no camera controls other than some basic zoom in zone out tab highlight action more Click a bucket, yada, yada. I mean, that's fine. Wasn't really hooked during the first intro mission. What were these people expecting? Like, I keep thinking of, like, Disco Elysium. Is Disco Elysium is the same way. Touring government contributed to the funding through... I really shouldn't be reading these. Reading negative reviews on a game that I'm enjoying, like, brings it down regardless like because i'll start because i'll be like when i go back tomorrow it's it's done it's doomed knowing that this is mostly negative when i go play the game tomorrow i'm going to be thinking like am i in, am i should i be enjoying this like it's, it's just going to be like clunky i mean yeah it's clunky but i wouldn't call it a, i wouldn't give it a negative review it's not that clunky it just has like some this game's 30 dollars. y'all need to chill uh, it's basically a documentary about Australia with very good artwork, but bland and boring modern dialogue. Absolutely not. 5% gameplay. People are nuts. I mean, I agree with some of these, like, these gripes, but I would not thumbs down it. Very surprised. So many, so many negative reviews, indeed. This is a pretty lengthy one. It's not terrible, it's just a little boring. I know it sounds stupid to call one of these things slow. Deliberate pace is practically a core genre tenet, but Broken Roads takes forever to get to the point. I was three hours in before I got my first non-tutorial combat encounter, and by then I had maxed out my sharpshooter stat for all the story quest experience that I didn't get any satisfaction from. My man's looking for, my man's looking for combat. This guy wrote a whole book. <laughs> this guy, this guy is is complaining about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, it's boring. I know it's a stupid call game, slow, but the pace is practical. Core takes forever to get to the point. It's funny. Within the first few paragraphs, he says it takes forever to get to the point. <laughs> this long, this long review. <laughs> It's funny. I mean, th there might be, this might be a good review. I just, I just, I just thought this was, <laughs> this is funny. Uh, first two or four acts have you completely on a leash following highly scripted sequence, basically a passenger until the game finally eases up the reins in act three, gives you a map. Start with some of the good though.
gets old fast. You don't get to level up your party members. Ugh. Whole thing feels underproduced, maybe a little too vanilla. Sorry, I'm late. I've been a workaholic. How's the new job? I start tomorrow. I start my new job tomorrow, which is funny because this morning, this morning at seven, I'm still going to play it. I, I thought it was fun. I, I think it's doing exactly what it's set out to do. It's, um, yeah, I don't, I don't have expectations for, for the combat. Um, like Disco Elysium was solid gold and it had like minimal mechanic. I wonder how that guy feels about Disco Elysium. I'm curious. You know, I'm going to look. I'm going to I'm curious cuz like all of these I could be reading these guys about Disco Elysium and that's like a 10 out of 10 solid game. Let's see. Did he review is there a way to check views? Can I search? Man, he writes some long reviews, though. Give him that. I don't think he... Ooh, or unless I'm spelling it. Is it D-Y-S-K-O? He didn't, he didn't review Disco Elysium. Yeah, like, like this game. He's thorough. <laughs> I write novels for reviews as well. I mean, technically, I mean, my Dragon's Dogma re review was three was three thousand. My Unicorn Overlord review was thirty five hundred words. My dis in my Dragon's Dogma two review is thirty two hundred. I don't have it in front of me. It's weird writing that much. I think a Steam review should be like a paragraph or two. Rookie numbers, you gotta get those numbers up. I'm not sure. I mean, I'll play it. I mean, I've only I'm only three hours in. I think it was fine. Those are videos. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe that guy made a video. Um Yeah, I thought it was fine. I mean, the thing the reason you play a game like this is the story and the dialogue and the characters. And if those are good, that's, that's, I mean, that's what I'm here for. The morality system looks interesting. I don't care about the combat. I'm not, I mean, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> um, if the combat's bad, it's not going to have that much of an impact because I don't, I don't have high expectations for the, or I'm, I'm like, like, I don't expect anything from the combat. I like some of the characters. They're funny. Yeah, I think it's fine. We'll see. Yeah, I think it's fine. We're going to watch the beginning later. Yeah, we spent some time in the character create. We spent a good hour in character creation alone, so I guess that was... Uh, yeah, we'll see. Like that guy was talking a lot about combat and he also built his character for combat. Like his review said that um, he maxed out ranged weapons. Sammy made me yawn. I, I'm getting, like my sleep schedule's been messed up. 
The guy was talking about maxing out ranged weapons. Like, I think he was looking for, like, a tactical combat game. King of the Night Owls making people tired. I mean, the sun's up, man. It's time to sleep. We wake up when the moon rises. Oh, speaking of which, I have a cool story. All right, I'm gonna wrap up the stream with this with this awesome story. So Monday, I went to the eclipse. I went and saw the eclipse. It was awesome. I'm gonna switch to uh, switch to the chat cam. It's trapped. We fall asleep early. There's more night for him. Yes, right. Hogging all the night. So I went to see the eclipse on Monday. I drove out to Jonesboro, Arkansas which is about a two hour drive from Memphis. Well, it's about an hour drive from Memphis. It took me about two hours because of traffic. I, 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 when I woke up Monday morning, I made a decision. I told myself I can either leave super early, 7 a.m. and make the drive without traffic and then sit up there at Jonesboro for a few hours waiting on, on the eclipse or I could leave at 10 a.m., sit through traffic, and then get there in time. I decided to sit through traffic and get there in time. I'd much rather, I would much rather spend an hour in traffic than spend an hour waiting not in traffic. Much rather be in traffic. Because traffic, like even though you're even though you're moving slowly, you're still like there's progression. But once you get there. Also, that's time I could spend with Homer. I don't, like, that's time I could spend with Homer. I could just stay at home. So I ended up deciding to drive to leave here at 10, 10 a.m., which, for context, the eclipse was at 2. Got there just in time. So here's the cool part. Here's the cool, here's the cool part. By the way, the eclipse was awesome. The cool part. I didn't have a plan um, as far as where I was going to go when I got there. I was just going to go. Like, Worst case scenario, I show up, I sit in my car and watch the eclipse. Worst case scenario, the eclipse happens, I'm sitting in my car. But I figure if I get there, I could like look around, see if there's like a park or something, a gathering. Um, also, I had to find eclipse glasses. I didn't have any. So that was my plan when I got there. I was going to go hunt down some eclipse glasses. So I left. I got to Jonesboro. I, pun in, I punched into my GPS, Jonesboro. I didn't give a specific location. I didn't know anything about the area. Just put Jonesboro, take me there. I followed the GPS all the way where it told me to go. And right where the GPS dropped me off, there was a gathering, like literally right there. There's like a couple of tents. So I parked over by the tents and I walked up and I told him, I was like, hey, coming here from Memphis, um, is this, uh, is this open? These old ladies, they were so sweet. These old ladies walked up to me like, oh, yes, of course. Like, they, like, pull me aside. They bring me over to their table. Like, there's a bunch of food set up. And they're like, here, get you a hot dog. Like, they're just like, they loaded up a plate with food, handed it to me. They gave me Eclipse glasses. I told them I didn't have any Eclipse glasses. They hand me Eclipse glasses. I was like, this is, it's, I was like, you guys take, ca or I was like, you guys take card? And she's like, what are you talking about? I was like, cash card she's like oh no no please take it it's free so they had like cookies hot dogs chips drinks i was like jesus man y'all <laughs> gave me my gave me some eclipse glasses it was awesome like i legit right where the gps dropped me like the gps dropped me off and they were right there and i just i was just like walking over, i was like it's like hey looking for uh people to hang out with they were so nice um, I asked him who put this together. It was the church. There was a church right there. There was somebody, there was a photographer there taking pictures. It was really cool. And let me tell you, when the eclipse happened, it was pretty surreal. Pretty crazy. Um, it was scary, actually. Seeing the sun, seeing the moon like go in front of the sun. Did you get to see the totality? Yeah. The creepiest thing, like you've seen, you've probably seen pictures where you have just this black circle in the sky surrounded by that white light. Like you've seen, I'm sure you've seen pictures of an eclipse. That's what it looks like. And it's in the sky. <laughs> I know that sounds so stupid, but it's, 
insane how it like it looks crazy i mean I, as soon as it started i was just staring at it. i was like man that is the scariest shit <laughs> I took some of the Eclipse 2019. Imagine how the Aztecs felt since their religions. But yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, man, I can't imagine. Because even like no, knowing everything that I know still looking at it, I was like, man, this is like crazy. What is going on up there? I saw this YouTuber. I guess he's a YouTuber. Hank Green. I'm sure all of you have at least heard of Hank Green. I want to say it was Hank Green that I heard this from, but somebody, somebody was talking about the eclipse and said that if if our civilization was was a galactic civilization spread across the entire galaxy, if um, if we had like space travel, teleportation, like our if our entire civilization spread across the entire galaxy, Earth would be a tourist attraction for the eclipse. That's how rare it is. That's how rare that that, that experience is. No, oh, well, I, it may have been Hank Green, somebody. It was a YouTube. It was a YouTuber. I definitely because I was watching some eclipse videos leading up to the to the eclipse. Earth would be a tourist attraction for the for the eclipse. Oh, I think. Oh, you know what? Maybe it was a Reddit post. Maybe it was a Reddit post. Or, or maybe I heard it from two different... I don't know. I did see a Reddit post that was like, what would Earth's flag be? So if if there was like a galactic civilization, aliens and everything, and Earth had a representative, what would the Earth's fra- what, what would Earth's flag be? And the top comment or one of the top comments was, it would be our eclipse because that's... <laughs> the Our flag would be the eclipse because that's, that's like a really significant thing that our Earth... About our planet... One of the most significant of of all the of of the many rare things that our planet does. That one's up there. I thought that was cool. Have like a little eclipse flag. That would be a that would be Earth's. That would be an epic flag. The Aztec sun god's always running from the moon, and that's why they need the wage war sacrifice to give sun gods power. Imagine how they felt when the moon covered the sun. dark days probably only for a second or only for a few minutes yeah incredible to see look like it reminded me of dark souls you remember dark soul like the dark soul in dark souls reminded me of (laughs) i know that's fun i know that's silly but imagine how many babies got sacrificed in those few minutes i no, <laughs> so I can think about that. There's like a million other things to be. I'd rather be thinking about. About a million other things. So many other things I could be thinking about besides babies getting sacrificed to an eclipse. <laughs> to an eclipse. Why is why is that where your head goes? Did you get any good pictures? No, no, I did not get any good pictures. I, I recorded a video and posted it in the Discord of the shadows. I got a video and posted it in the Discord of the shadows that come through the, the trees that make the little crescent, little crescents. That was pretty cool. But no, I didn't. I tried to get a picture of the actual eclipse that, or tried to get a video of the actual eclipse. That didn't, that didn't pan out. It didn't look good. I have to go find that. It's in the Discord. It's in the picks i think book has a lot of aztec influence was always one of mine i'll get to it hey what's more important pp do you want me to play near replicant or read the first few chapters of your book which what's more important to you because i keep thinking like oh i should play near replicant because pp's gonna harass me about it but pp but then i was thinking like oh well pp's also gonna harass me about his book too so gotta choose one or the other which, by the way, I don't really have time for either. I guess I could not stream. All right. We're going to end on that. I used my Nikon Coolpix for the Eclipse book. 
I got a good camera right here, and I got another one back there. I just didn't bring it. Uh, I mean, you don't got to do either. <laughs> no pressure. Well, I already have near replicant here. I'd feel weird not playing it and sending it. I'd, I'd feel weird sending it back without playing it, so I got to play it. Um, I said this at the beginning, but I'll, but I'll say it again. I am changing my setup a bit. So to, to, tomorrow, I should get another table, another one of these tables. I'm changing my setup. I'm going to get another one of these tables, and it's going to go right here. It's six feet. It's going to stretch out pretty far and I'm going to get a mount. I'm doing a lot of, I'm doing a lot of studio, um, rework, reworking the, the studio. I'm glad you didn't use your good cameras. If you don't do it through the eclipse glasses, pretty intense on the photo receptors. Yeah. The, I talked to the photographer that was there about her camera equipment and she had, she had some pretty crazy stuff. This is really cool. She really got in the like. I told her that I that I have some camera stuff. I told her about my camera stuff. So she got really into the weeds about how she set it up. It's really cool. Just use my phone camera and Eclipse glasses. Steely renovation stream. Um, no, I don't want to stream it. I don't want to stream it. I could, but I don't want to. I don't feel like getting, like, I got enough distractions. Most of it's done. I just need to put a table here. Just like hanging out with you. Kind of makes you look small compared to the room. Does it? Well, that's, that might be the lens I could do. Is this better? Excited to see the new studio revamp. It's not going to be much different than how it looks right now. It's the angle. The angle is going to be, oh, so the angle is going to be different because right now I just have this table. The angle is going to be different because I just have this table. Room seems bigger at this angle. But I think, I don't know if it's the angle. I think it's the lights. I think it's the lighting change that makes the room bigger, but I don't know. Um, once this table gets here, I'm going to, this is how, this is how it's going to look. I'll have the table here and the camera will probably be moved. Seeing from the corner to corner does give the illusion of more depth. That is intentional. That's actually um, one of the things that I talked about with the photographer. This lens is a wide angle lens. This lens is for taking pictures of landscape. This is not a blogger, YouTuber lens. This is a lens that you use when you want to take pictures of landscape. I intentionally chose the wide angle lens because I wanted the, I wanted to, I want, that was like a design decision or a, I guess an artistic decision, a design decision. I wanted the room to be the landscape and then me be in the, center like like this i wanted to look like, like me and then the room was like super wide it's the aesthetic yeah the aesthetic that i decided on i thought that would be like unique and interesting unfortunately the room is not interesting enough for that decision i guess i, I need to improve the room a bit but the design is there um welcome back quentin quentin you're just in time i'm wrapping up Tomorrow, depending on how work goes, tomorrow we might have a stream, play some more Broken Roads. I don't think those negative, I don't think it's a mostly negative. That's, that's seen, that, like even a negative review seems kind of excessive. Oh, you know what? I just, I just looked, hold on. It's mostly negative, but there's only 18 reviews. That's why. That's why. It's not sterile like a lot of streamers like the setup. If you wind up getting mentally worn from all the new stuff you take in, 
don't feel bad if you need need the break. What new stuff? I mean, the first 18 reviews. Well, it's not all of them. It's not all of them. There were some good ones down here. But 18 isn't really. 18's not a lot. If it doesn't, it could result in a chain reaction. Yeah, it could be a it could be a bandwagon. That's why I'm gonna give that's why I'm gonna give my honest review, my honest insights. At work, learning the ins and outs. Oh yeah. I'm ex I mean, honestly, I'm excited about work. The negatives are quicker to post. Is that how it works? That seems to be the case, doesn't it? Like there's no way, unless this is a really short game, there's no way all those negative reviews have taken in the entire game, have gotten, have experienced the entire story. Bro spent hours on that. I'm going to put together my own review and hopefully post. Speaking of reviews, eventually I'm going to record my Dragon's Dogma review. My review for Dragon's Dogma is written. It's done. I just need to record it. But I am getting pulled in so many directions. I've got new job, renovating this room. PP's on me about reading his story and playing near. And then I've got this review. And then this new review that just popped up that I'm going to need to work on. Ender's on me about Xenoblade. Just can't catch a break, man. Homer needs me to pet him constantly. I'm just kidding. I love all y'all. PP's on everything. Um, so much to do. You're right. Even if you don't want to share it, let me know what you think of Bloodstain when you get to it. Hey, oh yeah, I forgot you recommended Bloodstain. I can't remember if we talked about this, but check it out. I was I was looking I, I added Bloodstained, which is a game. I added it to my wish list. I think it took it off already. I had Bloodstained on my wish list, right? And as soon as it went on sale, I got an email from Steam saying, Hey, a game on your wish list is on sale. It's Bloodstained. I was like, oh sweet. Just it was like 80% off. I was like, that's huge. 80%? Let's go. And just before I was about to hit purchase, I thought to myself, oh, I better check Game Pass first before I buy it. And sure enough, it is on Game Pass. So this is where I'll be playing it. I'll be playing it on Game Pass. We'll not be playing it on Steam. It's pretty cool. Watch them take it off Game Pass before you get a chance. <laughs> well, they they'll announce before games get removed. They'll usually announce like a, a month off a month beforehand. But if it gets removed, then I'll just buy it. Big deal. The thing is, is I can wait on games to go on sale because my backlog is like full. So like if blood if Bloodstain goes back to full price and then gets removed off Game Pass before I can get to it. Guess what? I'll just add it to my Steam wish list. And then when it goes on sale again, I'll buy it. Got plenty of games to keep me busy until then. You get a lot of recommendations. Yeah, for the record, I request. I request recommendations. I'm always looking for new new games, new experiences. This is what I I live for this. I love this stuff. I love taking in taking in new games and experiencing them and enjoying them. That's what I do. It's my thing. All right, y'all. I'm going to get off of here. It's almost 8 o'clock for me. I'm getting tired. I might do... I need to clean up this... I'm going to clean up this uh, this mess behind me. This There's my old desk. There's my old desk right, right there. I 
This is why I give you obligatory near reminders. Good seeing you, Sam. Take care of yourself. Much love. Y'all wish me luck. My job tomorrow. New job. New jo- new first day jitters. I'm excited. I'm going to go up there, get my equipment, and then... Actually, I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm assuming I got to meet with HR um, and get my equipment. I don't know. All right. Maybe stream tomorrow. Definitely stream the day after. We, you know, we got to we got to get through Broken Roads. And after Broken Roads, there's a huge release coming up. Uh, no Rest for the Wicked comes out next week. Super excited. Good luck. Thank you, Crazy Star. Everybody, have a good night. See you in the next one. We're going to play some more Broken Roads. Till then, I'm out of here. Much love.